tell you this is a great opportunity for us to discuss the amendments in civil procedure. I know that some of you are uh, joining us, some law students, some uh, those who are taking the bar exams, and then some uh, professionals. We have some lawyers, and I know that there are some judges who are listening uh, and joining us this afternoon uh, in connection with uh, our study of civil procedure. Now, let me just give you a little background on how uh, this was activity was brought about. I recall Rex's uh, publication uh, gave me a uh, sent me a, I think a text for an email communication, and they wanted me to speak on the topics of civil procedure as amended and evidence as amended. So um, I know that this is I'm not so familiar with this type of platform social media, although in uh, my giving of reviews in the past, what they do is they actually they actually record my uh, my lectures and they actually upload it, they upload it uh, in the various social media platforms. But now this is different. This is live. So uh, in fact, we've had some uh, testing. So, uh, we're not as familiar. I, for one, is not so familiar, but I hope you will bear with us. We will try our best to cover everything for this afternoon. So you just have to sit down, relax there, and hopefully at the end of the day, you have a clear understanding of the amendments to civil procedure. Now, for law students listening to us, you know, this COVID-19 or uh, the pandemic will not in any way stop your learning. Learning will continue. And this is, uh, uh, as I tell all of my students, this is the unique uh, aspect of the study of law. Uh, there could be a lot of things happening around, but we have to be focused, we continue to study, but it doesn't mean that we are insensitive. I would want to be very clear with that. We are not insensitive, but we know that times are changing, there is a new normal, but we cannot stop students from aspiring to become lawyers, and we know at some future time, they will become lawyers. So having said that, it's clear to you now why we have this uh, activity. Now, let me give you a little background on what led to this uh, present amendment of the rules of civil procedure. I recall that sometime in January of 20, uh, 2019, that was more than a year ago, the Supreme Court issued Memorandum Order 14, I will correct that, 04 I will repeat, Memorandum Order, circular, Memorandum Order 04 2019, and that was dated January 2019. That was the memorandum order that created that committee. And that committee was tasked to look into the amendments of civil procedure. Now, it took the committee, just to give you an idea, it took the committee, it started working on the uh, on the provisions to the amendments I, as early as January, or maybe two weeks uh, after the uh, passage of memorandum order 04 2019. And I recall uh, accurately, uh, it was uh, finished around uh, maybe June or July. There are just a lot, a little bit, some uh, meetings here and there, uh, by, by somewhere about July and August, and then you have now the amendment. Now, you would want to know also uh, when was, under whose leadership was this? This was then under the uh, the leadership of former uh, Chief Justice Lucas Cooperson. And that's why he was the one who worked with us, who guided us together with Justice Lucas and together with the rest of the other justices. Ayoko na po, baka hindi ko mabanggit lahat. You have their Justice Adelesa, Justice Katiwa, of course. You have the Justice Midas, of course, also Later. Then we have uh, Justice uh, Peralta of the Court of Appeals, Justice Saint of the Court of Appeals, retired Justice of the Court of Appeals, Magdamal de Leon, and of course Judges uh, Judge De La Rosa, Judge Emboscado, and Attorney Estera, and myself representing the uh, practitioners and that. Now, it was not a, uh, an easy task. It was not an easy task because the mindset then was how can we improve the system in the Philippines? Some of you would say the, the, the rules of court is not broken. 
civil procedure is good as it is. In fact, I see it as very well written because that was when I started teaching it. They're about in 1997, when it was rolled out, the amendment of 1997, I started teaching that. But earlier than that, I was already teaching. So to my mind, this is a very good tool. But why was there a need to change it? The need to change it was brought about by the needs of the Ang ano, alam nyo, uh, and sadly, some people will always complain. Ang bagal naman ang justice system, eh. they always complain. They would say, well, the motion hearings are just there for purposes of setting the uh, dates for filing of opposition, comment, reply, rejoin them, numerous motions for postponement, and cancellations of hearing, extensions of time. There is no exact period for trials of cases. So, in short, what you're trying to tell us what the public and at the same time sadly some practitioners have been uh, uh, mumbling with ang bagal daw yun yun that is why here kindly take note kindly take note that this is this amended rules of civil procedure were the efforts of the justices wanting to expedite the proceedings and to cut delays and hopefully at the end of the day we will no longer mumble and say justice delayed Justice delayed is justice denied. You will see here the processes were not shortcut to 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 to, to let's say violate the rights of uh, parties. No, there were certain uh, procedures which were reviewed in order for their request in the procedure. I think that would be sufficient access for a better understanding. Before I start, kindly take note of certain guidelines. If I make mention of the old rule, I am referring to the 1997. Okay? So if I mention the old rule, I'm referring to the, to the 1997 rules. If I'm referring to the 1964 rules, I will refer to the 1964 rules. And I will not say that it is the old rule. Because it will be very seldom that I will touch on the 1964 rules. Now, don't worry, they will tell me, Attorney, baka oh, it's so confusing kasi Ang nakikita namin umiikot around is a side-by-side -side comparison. No, this will not be confusing. Hopefully, for those of you who have a copy of the new provisions, side-by-side -side with the old provisions, in the 1997, we will be, you will be able to compare it. And I will call your attention to it so that it will be easier for you to understand. And it will be easier for you to, to make the comparison. Because sometimes, you know, I've seen some comparisons mahaba. Baba, and that if you don't know the context upon which it was amended, it will be very hard sometimes to see the reason why it was so. So, yan ang titig, yan ang ating tatandaan, no? So, we can now start with our discussion. The first, I think I have a slide there, just for purposes of an outline. I hope that you have, they're flashing it right now. The first item that I would like to discuss with you is the provision on pleadings. There is a major amendment on pleadings. And if you will recall, for students listening to me right now, that the pertinent provision under the old rule is, sec is Rule 8, Section 1. Okay? Rule 8, Section 1. That's right. Okay. And it's basically the same. It's the, the provision, okay? The provision was taken from Rule 8. It was retained, to be more accurate. And then there was just an insertion. An insertion of what? An insertion of a phrase. And what does it, what is this phrase? Including evidence. So if I can now state it in a very short manner or a summarized manner, okay? In a very summarized manner, I will just say this, that every pleading should state the ultimate facts. That the allegations therein should be based on ultimate facts. Anito, devoid, the original provision devoid of evidentiary matters. But today, okay, but today, okay, medyo hindi raw ako ata masyadong maliwanag. Okay, pag hindi ako maliwanag, ha, kung nag nagpuputol-putol po, uh, kindly just text me. Okay? And they say it's now better. I think it's better now. So I will proceed. So, I will repeat, baka hindi, hindi naging maliwanag yung una, no? Under the old rule, Rule 8, Section 1, sabi, based on ultimate facts and devoid of evidentiary matters. But under the new 2020 amendment, 
Rule 8, Section 1 now includes what? Including evidence, exactly the same provision. So what does it mean? We need to allege, but all of our what, allegations will have to be supported by what? Evidence. Can you take note of that? So, nung araw, ayaw yung ebidensya. Kasi sabi nila, yung ebidensya na yan will be presented when? During trial. For purposes of just initiating the action or filing your pleadings, exchange of pleadings, no, of responsive pleadings after the filing of the complaint, ultimate facts will be just right. Okay, doon. However, the Supreme Court noticed that there are very, there are some lawyers who are very good at crafting, ano, crafting complaints or crafting initiatory pleadings that it may appear ang ganda na pagkakasulat. Wala namang ebidensya. There have been instances wherein the case is already on trial and some lawyers are still looking for their evidence. Some are looking for their evidence, looking for testimonial witnesses or witnesses, looking for what? For documents. The Supreme Court doesn't want that. Hindi na, kasi yun na nagpapatag ng kaso. Siyempre, pag walang ebidensya, wala ka naman testimonya o magte-testify, paano tayo magpuporsid sa trial? And that delays the proceedings. Napansin na nila yan. So, what were, they, what were the adjustments made? Ito yun. I recall that this was first discussed in 2013. Alam niyo po, una itong diniscussed on 2013. I was also a member of that committee. That committee in 2013 that was led by Justice Abad na tinignan po yung rules on civil procedure. At ang isa po na gusto nilang dagdag noon was that when you file the complaint, lahat na ng ebidensya mo nandun. But that was not uh, adopted. It did not take effect. But now, medyo may konting adjustments po. Ganun na. So if you file a complaint today, And according to the drafters, eh, you have sufficient time. Your sufficient time is within the prescriptive period. Tama? Depending on in bridge that you claim, you have enough time to what? To prepare for the judicial affidavit. You have enough time to prepare for what? Documentary and object evidence. That is why we now have a new provision. Okay? And what is that new provision? That provision is found in Rule 7, Section 6. Kindly take note it ito, no? Kaya nga po may mga alam akong abogado na minadali nilang mag-file ng pleadings. Whether a complaint, answer, kung ano pa ho yun. Minadali nila. Bakit? Kasi magte-take effect na po itong pinag-uusapan natin ngayong araw. Because there are a number of requirements already. Number one, together with the pleading, okay, that lays your claim or defenses, you will have to indicate who, what? The names of your witnesses. Okay. Upon which you base your upon which you base your claim and defense. Number two, you will have to give the court in the pleading a summary of the witness testimonies. Kailangan po nandun, may summary yun ng witness testimonies. And it doesn't end there. Madali pa yun if it's just a summary of the witness testimonies. The requirement of law is what? You have to attach the judicial affidavit. Sabi mo, attorney, mahirap yun. Well, mahirap yun pag wala kang tao, pag wala kang ebidensya. Mahirap talaga yun. Pero pag may ebidensya ka, di ba, habang gagawa ka ng complaint, kinakausap mo ng testigo ito, gumagawa ka na rin ng judicial affidavit. Because that's the mandate of the present law. By the time you file your pleading, you should be ready, not only with the summary of the witness testimony, you should also be ready with what? You should be ready with the judicial affidavit. Now, now, sa stream of attorney, sandali lang, eh, sabi doon sa judicial affidavit rule, yan ha, sasabihin nun, yung mga estudyante ko, na nakikinag, alam nila, there is the judicial affidavit rule. Siyempre, mga lawyers, lagi po natin kinagamit yan. Di ba? There is the judicial affidavit rule. Sabi mo, Oy, wait, under the judicial affidavit rule, I can submit my judicial affidavit five days before the pre-trial. Tama po yun. That's under the judicial affidavit rule. Now, it also says, and there are some judges who are very liberal or very lenient naman, mamabayad, dahil alam lang madaming trabaho ng abogad. Sabi nila, okay, also provided in the judicial affidavit rule, you could file your judicial affidavit five days before the scheduled presentation of evidence of that particular witness. But in the light of this, okay, in the light of this, probation now, you have to what? Incorporate or include the judicial affidavit in the pleading that you are filing. You don't need to wait for pre-trial. You don't need to wait for trial. Okay, now, and kindly take note of the express mandatory provision of the rule. I'm still referring to section, ano, section 6 of Rule 7. What does it say? Only witnesses with judicial affidavits are attached to the pleading may be considered or may be presented during trial. So, ganun kahigpet. 
Okay? So, may gumawa, gumawa ka ng complaint, gumawa ka ng sagot, kailangan ready ito. Okay, now, wait. But I will give you some, uh, I will give you some uh, parang uh, window, which I think, based on my reading of the law, can be a window. Because there is a provision under the new Rule 18. Ito po yung bagong Rule 18, Section 2, and makikita niyo po doon yung provision ng ano, reservation. And that provision allows reservation of testimonial evidence, even reservation of documentary evidence. Okay? In that provision on pre-trial na doon, you could make a reservation of uh, testimony of witnesses if you give the name, the address, and the nature of the testimony. Pag object of documentary evidence, ano? Anong, nakas- anong sabi doon for you to be able to reserve? You have to give the description of the document or the object. Luanag. However, dadagdag ko to yung pangatlo. Doon sa section 6 of rule 7, the documentary or object evidence should likewise be what? State, stated. And in the documentary and object evidence in support of the allegation, that it should likewise be stated. So if you read this, on a very, what you call this, uh, strict reading of the same, it appears that pag nag-submit ka ng pleading, whether it be a complaint, answer, or whatever responsive pleading for the pattern, okay, kailangan i-attach mo na yung documentary and object evidence. Dito marami na akong nagpuhang tanong, whether from students or from lawyers, ang tanong nila ay ganito. Sir, madali yan, kasi kung dokumento, i-photocopy ko lang, I'll scan it, I'll reproduce it, and I'll attach it. No problem. Sabi nila, e paano ho pag object evidence? Like for example, cell phone, for example, a, uh, a small object. I think what's best would be to indicate that you are ready with it. Okay, that you are ready with it. And at any time the court requires you to present it even during pre-trial, you could present it for purposes of examination of the party. Okay? Isa sabi mo, paano naman attorney kung ito yano? E paano kung ito ay immovable? Okay? Siyempre, hindi yung nadadala sa usgado. Real property, building, condominium unit, doon do nangyari, no? Ano, attorney, anong pwede? Well, you have to state it. You have to allege it. But with an indication, to my mind, no? with an indication that this is available for inspection of the court. Okay? Dito pwede pumasok ang ocular inspection. Okay? Now, so maliwanag tayo. Yun ang unang nating item. Pleading. Now, ha? Now, ito ang masasabi ko at this point in time. Sasabihin niyo, attorney, parang napaka-tedious. Well, pagsasimula talaga, parang mahirap yan. Pero I tell you, pag nakasanay na natin, this will help the system. And that is the reason why this was introduced. Pag pumunta ka sa usgado, pag pumunta ka sa usgado, alam mo may kaso ka. And sorry, no? Sorry po sa sasabihin ko ito. I know that there are some lawyers who would file cases for purposes of leverage. Sampahan kita ng kaso para makipag-usap ka sa akin. Sampahan kita para makipag-compromise ka sa akin. Kasi kung may kaso ka, iba usapan. Ganun po yun. yun ang, we are veering away from the practice. Dalin lang natin sa usgado yung talagang may kaso kung sa tingin mo na violate ang karapatan mo, dalin natin sa usgado. Ganun po yun. Ngayon, supportahan mo ka agad ng ebidensya pag file mo. Kaya nga po, if you would note, the period to file an answer now is longer. Ayan. I'm calling your attention to Rule 11, Section 11 now. The period to file an answer is what? Is already 30 days. I will repeat. From the original 15 sa old rule, it is now 30 days. Kaya nga hinabaan kasi nung pag-uusap nun, naku parang may clear, may clear 15 days. And kindly take note, you are entitled to a singular singular exception. Ah, nah, I will withdraw the word exception. A singular extension of 30 days. So, a maximum na magagamit mo, 60 days. There is no reason para hindi mo na ma-produce yun. Yun ang thinking ng ginawa yung matas. Ang thinking, siguro yung 60 days kung talaga may kaso ka o kung may depensa ka para sa answer, no, kung may depensa ka, eh dapat nakita mo na yan. Kasi halos dalawang buwan yun. You're entitled to one extension. Now, at this point in time, kindly take note that based on the provision of the rules under Rule 11, the 2020 Amendment, the court will no longer entertain any extension of time. Wala na. Yun lang, singular na extension na yun sa answer, 30 days, sa ano. But other extensions or pleadings will not be allowed. Again, of course, you will find that in the provision of law, even if it was filed out, okay, you could always ask the court. But again, as a practitioner, I will tell you that's left purely to the discretion of the court. Okay? So pleadings, yun. Maliwanag tayo dyan. Sabi natin, may complaint, may answer. Alam na natin na the period of file and answer is a period of 30 days. Now, let us talk about now a reply. Okay? A reply. 
And as you know, okay, as you know, a reply, what is the function of a reply? The function of a reply is to meet the new matters raised in an answer. And based on procedure, it is the plaintiff and not the defendant that files generally the reply. Nagre-respond ang plaintiff dun sa pinagsasabihin ng defendant sa kanyang answer. And these are new matters and usually these are the defendants. Sabi nyo, payment na, bayad ako dyan. Oy, we need na yan, ha? Okay, these are new matters that, we, that the other party, the plaintiff may want to meet in a reply. Remember this, under the amendatory provision, kindly take note, this is section 6, okay, I'm sorry, section 10 of rule 6. I will repeat, section 10 of rule 6. Anong sabi dito? A reply as a general rule is a prohibited plea. I will repeat, a reply is a prohibited plea. Hindi na po pe pwede yun. Eh, attorney, paano ang effect nun? Eh, hindi naman, wala naman actually effect eh. Because in the past, optional rin ang pagpa-file ng reply. If you if you decide not to file a reply, the new matters raised in the answer are deemed as controverted. It's not a mandatory plea day. So ngayon, ginawa, general rule, walang reply. Because kahit hindi ka naman nag-file ng reply and there were new matters raised in the answer, these are deemed controverted or disputed. Now, take note of the exception. The only instance that the provision of the law the only instance that the provision of a law of the law allows the filing of a reply is when the answer attaches an actionable document. And you know what an actionable do- document is? An, an actionable document is an action or is a document which is the basis of a cause of action. That is an actionable document. Therefore, in the course of defending himself, the defendant attaches an actionable document. And maybe that's the basis of his counterclaim you have to file a reply, okay? Because there is an actionable document, okay? You have to file a reply. And for some of you who could still remember this was asked in the bar exams before. If there's an actionable document in an answer, you have to mandatorily file a reply. Otherwise, if you fail to what? Specifically deny it under oath, it is admitted as to its genuineness and due execution. Now, let us say, okay, let's move forward, and this is covered by the provision of the law. There was a reply, and in the reply, there is another. There is an actionable document. In the reply, what happened? The defendant can file a rejoinder to meet that actionable document. So I repeat, for purposes of summary, a reply as a general rule is not allowed. It is only allowed if there is an actionable document attached to an answer. Okay, let's move on. And for as we continue, kindly take note na this this discussion is really to to help us understand the amendments. Kindly don't expect me to go over it. Regular review na yun. Magre-review tayo yun sa mga different na review centers or schools na papasukan ninyo. Bubuin natin yun. But for now, we will highlight all of this amendment. And I assure you, okay, I assure you, you just stay, sit back there, relax, and follow the provisions. We will cover at the very least 95% of the amendment. We will discuss it 95%. Siguro nga, baka mag-spill over pa yan, 96, 97%. We will cover it. It's, sir, ba't di mo pagawing 100%? Kasi yung mga hindi ko i-cover, matters of form na lamang. Yung mga matters of form na. Like what? Yung for example, uh, what is the form of uh, an electronic filing? Ano dapat lalabas doon sa electronic document? Yung title, yung body, hindi na lang di-discussin yun. Okay? But the rest, everything, another one. Yung mga his, her, gender amendment din na. Hindi natin ba pag-uusapin. Okay? Now, let us now proceed to our next topic. Our next topic now refers to affirmative defenses. Okay? Hindi, bago muna ako mag-affirmative defenses. Wala ito dito sa ano natin, ha? Wala iyan sa outline. Isingit yun na lang sa outline. I will discuss a third-party complaint. Okay? What's the basic rule? And it has not been changed from the old to the new. You need leave of court to file a third party complaint. You need leave of court. You cannot just decide I'm the defend I'm the I am the defendant. I file an answer and I file a third party complaint. And I will bring a party against whom the court has no jurisdiction. Whether now, whether before or presently, you need leave of court for a third party complaint. Pero sa sabi mo, attorney, ano naman bago? Ay, ito po ang bago. Hindi basta, noon kasi, before, in the old rule, there is no parameter. Parang ang laki ng leeway ng isang judge. Kung tatansyahin niya kung pwede, 
pwedeng tanggapin. Sige, third party complaint na ito, tanggapin ko, sumagot ka defendant. There's there's really no parameter under the law. The, 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 the judge is given so much of a leeway, uh, discretion to do it, but now there are parameters, okay? Or limits to that discretion. And what are those? A third party complaint will not be allowed or should be denied if it is what? It covers extraneous matters. Hindi naman kasama doon sa ano eh, sa pinag-aawayan, dahil papasok mo. Extraneous matters, you cannot include that in a third party complaint. Second, if the defendant, third party defendant, okay, the court cannot acquire jurisdiction over the person of the third party defendant within a period of 30 days, okay? Kasi, pag hindi natin yan, it might take forever. It might delay the case for another three months, for another five months, for another six months. If the court cannot acquire jurisdiction over the person of the defendant within a period of, within a period of uh, 30 days, ah, wala, hindi ka papapasukin. Because for the third party complaint to prosper and to proceed, the court has to acquire jurisdiction over the person of the third party defendant. And the third, the court will deny your third party complaint application if it tends to introduce new matters to a controversy. Okay, new or separate matters, meaning totally independent, not related to it, e pinapasok mo doon, it will be denied. Now, sabi mo, hindi sir, wala naman, kawawa eh, but I have a legitimate claim. I have a right against this uh, third-party defendant in order to what? To contribute, to indemnify me if I am held by the court liable, to subrogate, hindi ho, pwede yung gawin. Sabi niya, but kindly take note under the present rule. I will repeat, wala ito sa old rule. Under the present rule, this is found in Rule 6, Section 11. And what does it say? The court shall require the defendant to file a separate action. So, sasabihin ng court, okay, you've just filed a separate action. Okay? Ngayon, tatanungin mo ko. You're a practitioner listening sa akin ngayon. No? Sasabihin mo, iba e, paano kung hindi naglabas si court ng order? Hindi pa naman, hindi ba siya masyadong pamilya? Hindi siya naglabas ng order requiring you to file and just file a separate action. Kung ako ho yun, and I feel, kunyari, dininay na ako. Dininay na ako. And I feel that it is really a separate action. I will file the complaint. And that will be a separate case. I will have to pay the docket fees. It will have to be raffled. No? And I will have to follow the requirements of a pleading. No? That would include evidentiary matters. Those that I have enumerated. Okay. I hope that's clear. Now, let us now move on. Okay. Meron daw helicopter sound sa background ko. Wala akong helicopter dito. Okay. Yun hong ano lang, may dumaang sasakyan. Siguro, tunog helicopter. Okay. So, pasensya na kayo kung medyo na siguro naingayang kayo na sa akala nyo. Wala akong helicopter. Okay. Now, let us now proceed with the affirmative defenses. But before I proceed with affirmative defenses, dun mo muna tayo sa kontroversyal. Ano yon? Motion to dismiss. Kasi pag dinis-discuss ko yung motion to dismiss, definitely I would touch on affirmative defenses. Things that you have to remember. Motion to dismiss, buksan nyo po ngayon kung may kopya kayo ng bagong provisions, ano? Rule 16, makikita nyo yan, deleted, transposed. Okay? Tinanggal na yung Rule 16 na yan. Tinanggal yung Rule 16 na yan. Kasi ano ginawin? Eh parang nag-burst ganun. Apo, tinranspose siya is either dinilit, okay, sabi nga doon, deleted, or transpose. Ngayon may mga tanong na natanggap ko na sa mga abogado. Okay, kaya nga ibabanggin ko na. Ang tanong yan, okay, let's be very clear. Doon muna tayo sa rule ngayon. Ano sabi? A motion to dismiss is a prohibited pleading. Okay. What does it mean? You cannot just file a motion to dismiss. You can only file a motion to dismiss under rule 15, Section 12. Buksan nyo po. Kung may kopya kayo, Rule 15, Section 12, ang sabi doon, ano? Only on the following grounds. Number one, subject matter jurisdiction. Number two, litis pendencia. Number three, res judicata. And finally, statute of limitation or prescription. Other grounds. Ibang grounds po, ano? Ano mangyari yun? Ibang ground po ay lahat ng grounds ng motion to dismiss lipat na sa affirmative defenses. Okay? Ganun lang po yun. So, so, ibig sabihin, attorney, hindi na ako pwede mag-file a motion to dismiss. Pwede, pero doon sa apat lang na binanggit ko sa inyo. Pero all of the other grounds, lipat na yon sa affirmative defense. Ngayon, tatanungin mo ko. Okay? Para namang unfair yun. Eh, paano naman kung walang jurisdiction over the person the defendant? Hindi mo. Eh, paano walang legal capacity? 
all of those can be raised in an answer as an affirmative defense. Okay, can you take note? Now, here is where you will see the policy of the court. Okay, here's, here is where you will see the policy of the law. Ang gusto ng law dito, ano? To have the issues joined. Because without an answer, and there's a motion to dismiss just like floating around to be resolved, MR, petition for certiorari, ano yun? That will delay the entire proceedings. The court cannot even proceed to pre-trial. Or even court annex mediation. Or even judicial dispute resolution. Bakit hindi pa rin po proceed sa... Wala eh, walang issue, walang joint of issues eh. And that is the reason why the motion to dismiss are all, the grounds for a motion to dismiss are only limited to those four. Okay? The rest, nilagay na yan. Hindi naman po, po hindi naman kasi ibig sabihin, hindi, ka namo, hindi mo na pwede pa dismiss. Pwede mo pa rin pa dismiss. Kaya lang, file an answer with an affirmative defense. Next question. Magandang tanong yun, sabi. Ito, magandang tanong ito, nangito. Sabi niya, ilang ho ba ang period na to file na ano? Okay, tanong. Ilan bang period to period to file a motion to dismiss? Kasi nga ho, nawala eh. In, yun naman, section 1, section 1 of Rule 16 was not transposed to another section. And that section 1 provides the period within which to file a motion to dismiss. But this is clear in jurisprudence and in practice. So maliwanag naman doon sa mga gumawa nito. Na, the period to file is that period, that regulatory period to file an answer. Therefore, if the regulatory period to file an answer is 30 days, you have that period to file a motion to dismiss. Okay? That regulatory period. Now, ano mangyayari yan, sir? Or attorney, ano mangyayari yan? Once the motion to dismiss is filed, isang tanong rin to, will the period be interrupted? Definitely. Kasi wala naman subject matter. What is the reason for them to proceed? If there is no subject matter jurisdiction. If there is what? Multiple cases. There is no reason to proceed. Okay? So the period is interrupted. Ito lang ha? Ito lang ang tandaan po natin. Because under the original provision, ito po yung old rule ng section 16, nung nandyan pa po yan, section 4, that regulatory period po, interrupt. That regulatory period is interrupted. Maliwanag po yun, discuss natin. But if you re- if you filed your motion to dismiss, less than 5 days of that regulatory period, you have a fresh period of 5 days. Yan po yung old rule. Ha? Yan po yung guidelines natin. Pag sabi ko, old rule, 1997. Pero nawala po yun eh. Okay? It was already what? Deleted. Ay, ito na yun. mangyayari ron. Yes, there is interruption. Yes, the period is 30 days. But be very careful. Because you don't have 5 days as originally provided for in Rule 16. Nawala na po yun. We will have to apply the ordinary provisions on interruption. Okay? We will have to apply the ordinary rules on interruption. The act that caused the interruption under Rule 22 will have to be excluded. Ingat po tayo doon. Therefore, okay, bibigyan ko na kayo ng example. Finile mo, for my students listening, finile mo yan doon sa huling araw, yung motion to dismiss. Oh, after after a couple of months or a month, dininay. Okay? Magpa-file ka na ng answer. Ilan ang period mo? Wala po sa provision. Wala na yung Section 4 of Rule 16 because the entire Rule 16 is deleted. Ang position ko po riyan is this, application of Rule 22. So, you filed it on the last day, the act that caused the interruption is excluded. Therefore, you have only one, one day okay. to file a motion, to file your answer. Kasi po may motion to, ano ka na eh, may file ka, inubos mo eh. Okay? Inubos mo. Kasi ang binibigay na regulatory period is a period of what? 30 days to file an answer. E ginamit mo ng motion to dismiss, sinagad mong 30 eh. So kung ako ang gagawa niya, hindi ko sasagatin niya. Magpa-file, kung magpa-file ako ng motion to dismiss, based on the grounds that I've discussed, the allowable mo po to dismiss. Pa-file ako within 10 days, pa-file ako 15 days, hindi ko uubusin. Para may period pa ako to prepare for my answer in the event of my motion to dismiss. Okay, these are very good problem areas that were raised na itinanong po sa akin because of the absence of Section 1 of Rule 16 and the absence of Section Four, of Section 4 of Rule 16. Now, okay na po tayo doon. Okay na tayo dyan. Pupunta na tayo ngayon sa affirmative defenses. Because I said, all of the other grounds are now grounds for affirmative defenses. And as you know, this is found well. This is found, affirmative defenses are found in Rule 6, okay, Rule 6, Section 5B. Yan. Hindi po ako Rule 6, Section 5B. Buksan po ninyo yung bagong amended provision, makikita nyo. At may dagdag po yan na paragraph. 
yung ilang grounds doon ay inilipat. Ilang grounds sa Rule 16 inilipat. Ano po yung mga grounds na yun? Lack of subject matter, uh, lack of subject matter jurisdiction, litis pendensya, res judicata. Now you'll tell me, hindi ba sabi mo kanina, motion to dismiss yun? Oo, pwede ni file ng motion to dismiss. But again, you could still file an answer with an affirmative defense kung gusto mo. Kasi you may opt not to file a motion to dismiss eh. You could decide to file instead of an answer. At gamitin mo yun, subject matter jurisdiction, litis pendensya, res judicata. Sabihin mo, parang may napulo lang. Sabi mo kanina, statute of limitation. Because prescription is in the original provision of what? Affirmative defenses under section, Rule 6, Section 5B. Makikita niyo po yun. Doon sa first paragraph ng 5B. So let us be very clear. Una, very clearly, yung mga grounds doon ay inilipat sa affirmative defenses. Pero hindi pa ako nagtatapos dyan. Uh, hindi pa nagtatapos dyan. Kindly take note, ay eh, sasabihin mo sa akin. Importante kasi yung distinctions na ito eh. Okay? There is a section 12, okay? Rule 8. Buksan nyo po yun. Kung may kopya kayo. Rule 8, section 12. Wherein a portion of the grounds ay nandoon. Yung ibang grounds nandito, ano yun? Lack of jurisdiction over the person of the defendant, lack of legal capacity, okay? Improper venue, no cause of action, non-compliance with the condition precedent. Okay, nandun yun sa section 12. Paliliwanan ko kung ba't nandun. Okay? Nasa section 12 siya of rule 8. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, tama. Rule 8, section 12. At wala siya doon, ano, sa 5B. Bakit? Ganito yun. Okay. This is the explanation. Because there is now a summary hearing which the court may want which may be called by the court. Okay? Ang court ang pwede tumawag. Listen to this. So, pag nag-file ng answer, if an answer is filed, the court can motu proprio, what? Resolve the affirmative defenses within a period of 30 days. So, you don't have to worry when you file an answer as if you file a motion to dismiss because the court is bound to resolve your affirmative defenses within a period of 30 days from filing of the answer. That's clear. Huwag na kayo yung katulad no, matakot eh, hindi naman naiintindihin yung ano ko eh, affirmative defenses eh. Quiet lang yung court about that. No, the provision now is clear. The court, once the court receives an answer, and there are what, affirmative defenses, the court will study the same, and the court will have to resolve it within a period of 30 days from the filing of the answer. Medyo mabigat po ng konti, siyempre, may mga kaibigan tayong judges, medyo may tra- matrabaho po yun. Pero again, that will help speed up our system eh. Opo. Ngayon, it's sabi mo, ngayon, attorney, ano yung summary hearing? Ito po yun. For those, tandaan nyo po, ang isa summary hearing lang ng court, isa summary hearing lang po ng husgado, ay those enumerated in Section 5B. Okay? I will repeat. Those provided for in Section 5B of Rule 6. Yung binanggit ko kanina, buksan nyo po yun. Yung mga original provisions, nandun pa yun, estopel, fraud, inscription, yun yung first paragraph, hindi po nagilaw. Tapos yung pangalawang paragraph, na litis pendensya, subject matter jurisdiction, res judicata, yun po, ano yun? Pwedeng mag-summary hearing yun. Binibigyan ng usgado, and that is based on the court's discretion. Now, let's, uh, ito po sa mga studyante ko, napapalisan ako, no? ganito po yan. Hindi, magpa-file ako eh. Magpa-file ako ng motion for uh, summary hearing. That is a prohibited pleading. You could look at it in Rule 15, Section 12. Okay, Rule 15, Section 12. Isa po yan doon sa enumeration. Kung may enumeration, hindi ka pwedeng mag-file ng summary hearing because the court has a duty to conduct a summary hearing. Pag nakita niya, kailangan ko mag-summary hearing within 15 days from the filing of what? The answer. Okay, nakita ng court. These are the grounds provided for in Rule 6, uh, Rule 6, Section 5B. Okay, pwede ako mag-summary hearing. The judge will have to do it within a period of 15 days from the filing of the answer. Now, from the time of the termination of the summary hearing, the judge will have to resolve it within a period of 30 days from the termination of the summary hearing. Ngayon, sasabihin mo, babalikan ko ng konti. E ba paano yung lack of jurisdiction over the person of the defendant, improper venue, lack of legal capacity, okay? Lack of legal... The pleading asserting the claim states no cause of action and non-compliance with condition precedent. Ano mangyayari dito? Ito po, hindi sina summary hearing. Hindi po, based on the provision, hindi ito sa summary hearing. Because by just looking at the complaint, may kita ng usgado, ay, hindi. Meron bang ano? 
can I pass judgment based on the complaint? The pleading asserting the claim states no cause of action. So there is no need for summary hearing. Based on the pleading, will I see whether there was a proper venue? Yes. Based on the pleadings and the returns that was filed in court, may kita ko ba that there is no jurisdiction of the person to defend that? The answer is yes. Okay? So you all hindi sina summary hearing. Now, I think you we have to take note of this next statement. And I will be referring to Rule 8, Section 12. I'm referring to Rule 8, Section 12. At ano ito? Kindly take note, okay? Kasi mahaba po yung Rule 8, Section 12 na yan. Ano? May kita nyo po yung last line doon. Paano, sabihin mo, ipapano kung dininay yung ano ko, yung affirmative defense ko. Hindi, ipapail ako ng MR, this is certiorari ko. Di ba, ganun tayo? Ganun abogado. Kasi hindi, hindi ako papayag yan. Yung affirmative defense ko, deny. I'll file an MR, I'll, fi I'll file an MR, then I'll certiorari. Grave abuse of discretion. That is no longer allowed. Tandaan niyo po yan, ha? That is not allowed. Because you cannot file an MR, because you cannot file a certiorari, nakap nakasagot ka na eh. Kaya nga nag-summary hearing na or pwede na mag-desisyon ng kaso doon sa mag-resolve mag ang court doon sa ano mo, affirmative defenses. Thereafter, it will proceed to pre-trial. Mag-pre-trial na unless there is a reason to file a reply. Okay. And now, I mentioned the reply. Kindly take note of this. I will repeat this. The period to file a reply is no longer 10 days. Yung batas na inaral natin, the old rule, 10, 10 araw lang. Based on the present rule, Ano po yun? 15 days to file a reply. Tandaan nyo po yan, ha? 15 days. Buksan nyo po sa rule, 11. 15 days to file a reply. Now, I hope that's clear. Now, let's now proceed to the next point. Dito na po tayo, no? I am now on signature. Dito po, signature. Now, sabihin ng mga estudyante, huwag ko muna i-address yung mga practitioner. Sabihin ng mga estudyante, hindi masyado importado. Oy, lumabas na sa barang signature. Siguro may mga four, five years, five years ago. Signature, please do not in, ano to, ignore for the students listening to me. Dahil maraming pagbabago. For the practitioners, our burden are far, is far greater because of this provision. Okay? And let me call your attention. And this is still in Rule 7, Section 3. So walang nabago sa numero. Kaya lang, kindly take note, ano sabi rito? The signature of the council constitute a certificate that he has read it. Okay? Okay na yun. Eh, talaga naman, babasahin natin yun. And what? Based on my knowledge, information, and belief, after reasonable inquiry, can you take note of that? Ha? And to be more accurate, inquiry reasonable under the circumstances. I will repeat, quote and quote. Inquiry reasonable under the circumstances. Pero kung gusto mo naman madali, madali matandaan, reasonable inquiry. Ito po yung nagbago. Sabi mo, wala naman eh. Hindi ko, hindi ko compare ko. Yung old rule, ito sabi. Knowledge info that I have read it, it's not interposed for delay, and based on knowledge, information, and belief, and there is good ground to support it. Okay, tingnan nyo, yung luma. Sinasabi mo lang doon, eh, medyo alam ko eh. So a lot of this will depend on the disclosure of your client. Di ba? Kung ano yung sinabi ng client, oh, pwede. Baka pwede yan. Sige, mukhang tatayo naman eh. Pero ho ngayon, there is a duty, a clear duty on the part of the lawyer to conduct an inquiry reasonable under the circumstances. So kung yung kung binubola ka, tanungin mo pa ng tanungin. Ito ba, ganito yan? Talaga ba ito nangyari yan? O baka naman ng appreciation mo, mali. You have to ask that an inquiry reasonable under the circumstances. Because now the lawyer is practically giving, making a certificate. Okay? At ito ho, ha, pakinggan po ninyo. Ito nakalagay nito, ano ba yung nilalaman nitong ano to? certificate na ito. Meaning, when you sign, without necessarily putting that in the, provi in the pleading, ano, pag ako ngayon na informirma, anong daladala ng firma ko? In fact, bago ko po enumerating ito, ang may mga law offices po, ang tanong ay ganito. Sabi nila, parang napakabigat naman yan. Sabi ng iba, kahit ako, ako partner, o ako senior associate, igawa e yun ng bata. Kaya nga po ang sagot ko, ganito. You have to police your ranks. Because the very moment that pleading goes out, Lahat po tayo, damay. Ganun yun. And I will tell you what the sanctions are. There are sanctions. Mabigat po ito. In fact, nung nakita ko, nung dinidiscuss po ito, sabi ko, mag talaga practice. Mabigat. Mabigat po talaga. Kasi ngayon, hindi ka po pwede yung I surmise. Eh. That I will speculate that hopefully I have evidence. No. The very moment you sign, not only do you tell the court, hindi po ito pandelay, 
at hindi this is based on inquiry reasonable under the circumstances it also tells you i will enumerate huh, what your signature now includes that it is not for an improper purpose okay na para takutin kita para i-leverage kita or to harass or to cause unnecessary delay or to what to needlessly increase the cost of litigation and i would want to highlight the phrase to needlessly increase the cost of litigation alam niyo naman po sorry to sound uh, to say this no and to sound this way alam niyo may iba kasi yan sinasabi nila well eh, kung kaya niyang patagalan ng kaso may iba ganun eh kung kaya nila di I'll bring you kung di na kaya magbayad ng kliyente mo eh di wala na yan ng abogado ma- mapapagod yan yung iba ang tingin paguran yun know, yung you know, mahirap doon kaya lang naintindihan nito ng Supreme Court nakikita nila may iba parang makinarya eh dahil may makinarya siyempre handang lumaban na matagal so you have to be- think twice in filing your pleadings because that includes a certificate that you are not what needlessly increasing the cost of litigation and that is not for purposes of delay and that is not from, for any proper cause una pa lamang yun ang bigat no pangalawa that really take note that your claims defenses or allegations are warranted by law and jurisprudence so ibig sabihin na pag ikaw ay ano when you when you sign your pleading as supported yan ng law may basehan yan sa bata meron rin jurisprudence that will support that that you, that's what you're telling the not only your opponent but you're telling the court meron pong basehan yan sa bata at sa jurisprudence at the same time at sabi mo sa akin attorney big boba sabihin ngayon eh hindi na hindi na kami pe pwedeng magano yung bang to overturn jurisprudence to modify it because that has been outdated pwede pa ho but the standard laid down by law when you sign that you should not be what making frivolous allegations okay that you are not making frivolous ab- allegations just to extend to modify or reverse existing jurisprudence bigyan po bigyan ko po kayo ng example This is a case I handled more than siguro more than 15 years ago matagal na ata matagal na ito more than or maybe 12 years ago Naalala ko yung kalaban ko nag-argue kami Ang liwanag naman po ang liwanag ng law ang liwanag ng jurisprudence But he's a very nice person he's a very nice guy sabi niya sa akin Sabi ko in open court sabi ko this settled by jurisprudence already Alam mo sabi niya sa akin Binulungan niya ako Sabi niya sa akin Panero, let us just enrich jurisprudence. Napakamot ho ako ng ulo. That is an example. We don't just flood the courts, especially the appellate courts, of useless appeals. Of useless what? Petitions. Pati po, and kasama rito mga complaint. Pangatlo. Okay. The factual contentions have no evidentiary support. Okay? Parang narinig nyo na ito, di ba? Sounds familiar. I discussed this a, a little a, a while ago on signature. What does it say? Evidentiary support. So we are telling the court that together with our allegations in the complaint, showing evidence that our allegations have evidentiary support. Okay. And again, the denials of factual allegations also are warranted by evidence. So you're telling that we're telling the court that whether it be a claim or a defense, supported po yan evidence. At kung hindi po yan available ngayon, By the exercise of modes of discovery, may ebidensya po yan. And that is provided for the judge. Well, give me a chance under the modes of discovery, then I will be sh- uh, able to show you that there is evidence. Yan po ngayon ang signature. So talagang napakabigat. Okay, napakabigat. Kasi ngayon, noon, noon, if I would recall, it's not interposed for delay that you are not making humiliating, okay, uh, or or scandalous allegations. Mga ganun lamang. Ngayon po, ang bigat. So makita ninyo ito, pinag-aralan, Pinag-aralan po talaga ng, uh, with the guidance of leadership of the justice na nakita na, na hindi na siguro it's high time. Na wag na. Pa- tigilan na yan at dapat pag dala kayo ng kaso sa usgado, may ebidensya ka lang talaga. At sa simula pa lang meron. Now, what are the consequences? Siyempre, some people will trifle with it. Some people will play around with it. Sabi, anong consequences? The court may impose appropriate sanctions. Yung usgado mismo yun. Anong appropriate sanctions na yun? Okay, I will enumerate. Non-monetary. Baka ma-repremand ka, baka ma-penalize ka, ano pa. Second, na pwede ka pang ma-contempt, ano pa. You can be required to pay to the court. Monetary payment. Or you could be required to pay to the movement. The one who was affected by your, what? Filing. Baseless filing. 
and the second so one is you could be sanctioned by the court and second you know you could be held what liable you could be disciplined if you're a lawyer you could be disciplined an administrative case against you can be filed in simple words there will be a referral of an action for your disciplinary action okay it will be referred for your disciplinary action now who could be liable dito nakita niyo napakabigat nakita niyo kaya binigyan ito ng attention ng mga practitioner talaga ano yung ano yung uh, who be liable the attorney meaning the partner the associate the law firm itself oh so bin hindi naman yan ang practice ko eh ang practice ko tax eh ang practice ko ko hindi naman ako nakafirm eh but the law firm will be affected the next the party that violated the rule will be held liable and fourth the person responsible for the violation okay now let us now move on at ito ho yung pinaka i think mabigat there is what you call the joint and solidary liability what does it mean okay what does it mean joint and solid solidary liability uh, in the meantime po may pumapasok na tanong yung aking mga kasama at katulong diyan sa Rex hindi ko pa ho babasahin ito no ha nakikita ko naman pero i don't want to stop the discussion later on at the end i will answer a few of your questions okay now let us look at joint and several liability it means okay mali ng abogado nyo associate mali ng partner nyo damay ang opisina joint and solidary liability ng opisina opisina magbabayad doon hindi individual nyo oh ikaw bahala dyan ha oh may kasalanan dyan iiwang ito lahat tayo because the provision says joint and several liability of the law firm for violation committed by an partner by an associate or employee that's why I was saying at the start of this discussion that we will have to police our ranks we cannot feign ignorance hindi, sige tapusin mo na yan file mo na yan hindi basahin natin yan. because if something goes wrong the entire law firm could be held liable okay now let us now move on how about verification na bago ba na bago ba ang verification at sabihin sa inyo the general essence ano yun yung sa old rule ano sabi yun that this is based on my personal knowledge and authentic documents and record and doon pa yun. Okay. Ano ididagdag? And th- take note that the verification is the verification of your client. The verification of your client who is an individual or the verification of the officer of your client who is a juridical. Okay, let's look at this. The, aside from that, it's true and correct based on your personal knowledge and authentic documents and record. Number two, that it is not filed to harass to inc- needlessly increase the cost of litigation or to cause unnecessary delay. Attorney, parang narinig ko, yun ho yun. Nakita nyo, yung pirma ng abogado, parang verification. And the third, the factual allegations therein. And this is the verification of your client. Is what? Supported by evidence. So makikita nyo, when you file the pleading, whatever pleading it is, it should be supported by evidence. Including the evidence. Pag pumirma ka, your lawyer makes a certificate. Meron pong ebidensya yan. Sir, judge, meron po yan. By claim, defense, may ebidensya po yan. Okay? Or if it's not available for the time being by exercise of mode of discovery, I will show you the evidence. Okay? And your client will also verify that the contentions therein is what? Has evidentiary support. Now, let us look at this. And aside from that, and I think this is... Uh, in Rule 7, Section 4. Ito po yung Rule 7, Section 4. Ito po yung bago. At I think is talagang it gives us a real clear duty and burden on the part of the client. Ano yun? The verification is now a certificate of the truthfulness of the allegation. Hindi lamang siya because, ah, I will allege truth. You know, this is a certificate of truthfulness. Now, my next discussion will be very brief. Hindi po ibig sabihin, patatapos lang ako, hindi pa ho. On, I'm referring to verification. Now, I will touch on verification and certificate. Magkaiba naman po ang certificate. Certificate against non-forum shopping. Pero certificate on non-forum shopping against non-forum shopping, wala pong binago daw. Ang iba't ito pinagsasabay, attorney, ito lang po yun. This, my discussion, kaya ako sinabay, verification and certification is the authority to sign. Because there are times that the client will not sign, he will authorize someone else. According to the provisions, the mandatory provisions, if it's an individual, he should give a special power of attorney to whoever is signing for him or in his place. Or if it's a juridical entity, there should be a secretary certificate. Now, sasabihin mo, alam ko na yan, attorney. Tama, alam na natin yan. 
because that is provided for in jurisprudence. From the start in 1997, that was not in the provision of the code. Wala po yan. But there are what? Numerous jurisprudence that says that. And now it was just incorporated by the drafters, by the, by the committee, approved by the Supreme Court. Now, ilagay mo yung authority mo. If you are not, if it's not the, the party who is signing it, whether by a special power of attorney for an individual or a secretary certificate for a juridical entity. Okay, now, let us now look on. Okay, lipat na tayo. Dito na tayo sa next slide. Okay, mga kasama ko dyan sa Rex. Next slide na po tayo. Let's move on and discuss amendments. Okay, let us discuss amendments. What about amendments? Okay. Sir, okay. Just time check lang ako, no? Time check. We have one hour. One haka isang oras po tayo, no? So, the, the good thing is we have sufficient time and I will really discuss this, okay? Within uh, what I think is sufficient discussion to, 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 to elaborate the provisions, okay? Now, let us now proceed with amendment. Sabi po sa akin, meron ba na bago sa amendment? Meron po, dalawa. Dalawa. Yung ano, yung the first one is uh, amendment by leave, okay? By leave of court. And that is in section 3 of rule 10. The same number, the same number as the old. The same number as the old, new pareho. Ano ang dinagdag? Ito po yung dinagdag. In the original provision, it says, for as long as it will not inter it will be uh, it will not cause delay okay and of course that is left to the discretion of the court however with the new provision kasama na po dyan, it will not delay or it will not what the amendment will not confer jurisdiction meaning at the outset the court has no jurisdiction hindi naman because if it's the at the outset there is no jurisdiction the court cannot hear try and decide the case because it is only the law that confers jurisdiction. So now it's very clear. Pinag-aawayan ho yan dati. Very clear. Nilagay na dyan. Hindi ka pa pwede. Pag sa simula lang, ay wala ng jurisdiction ng usgado, you can't amend just to confer jurisdiction to the court. The next one, still on section 3. You cannot amend to now incorporate or to include a cause of action. When in the first place, the complaint had no cause of action. Iwanag po yun. And this is still... Ganun, ano ba yung malay, may departure? Wala po. Okay? Yan na ang sinasabi ng jurisprudence kahit before. Now, let me give you a little history. Kasi po sa 1997, ano na yung general na yung pag-asabi, it will not cause delay, and that is left to the discretion of the court. Kaya lang po, under the 1964 kasi, nakalagay po dyan, for as long as it will not alter. Okay? Meron po yun, the cause of action. Meron po yun. Now, naging silent po yun. Okay? naging silent po yung provision na yon doon sa 1997 rules. So, ibig sabihin ngayon, aliliwanagin ko, ang hindi pwede ay magano to introduce a cause of action. Kasi in the first place, wala. Pero can you alter the cause of action? That is left to the discretion. Discretion po yon. Ang hindi pa pwede, yung walang cause of action mula sa sito. Pero yung, okay, meron kang complaint, ang kita mo, babaguhin ko, from uh, preliminary injunction to uh, from injunction to sum of money babaguhin ko. Yung injunction is an original action to sum of money babaguhin ko. Left to discretion of the judge. Ang bawal po is to what? To introduce a cause of action when in the first place there was no breach or violation of the law. What is that allowed is what? You amend to confer jurisdiction. I hope that's clear. That's the first amendment, section 3. Okay? Itatanda nyo sa mga magbabar, magandang tanong yan sa bar exams. Ngayon, next, Amendment to conform with the evidence. That is Section 5. Remains to be Section 5 of Rule 10. Sir, may amendment. Ito yon. Wala nang amendment. No amendment to conform with the evidence. I will repeat. No amendment to conform with the evidence. Noon kasi, oh, pag dinidiscuss ko yan, under the old rule, what you allege is what you have to prove. Ganun yon. What you allege is what you have to prove. And if, in the course of the trial, you prove something which is different from that which is alleged, this provision will apply. Okay? This provision will apply. Paano mag apply yun? The court will allow you to amend the pleading to conform with the evidence. Kaya po may provision niya noon. Kaya lang, alam niyo po ba, kahit dun sa old rule, even if the amendment is not, even if the pleading is not amended, and it was, uh, evidence was, ex was presented during trial, and the court renders a judgment, the judgment remains to be valid. So nakita ng drafters, wala namang value. Nakagulo pa. So, ginawa na lang nun, no amendment to conform with the evidence. Therefore, 
if you present, you made allegations, but in the course of the trial, you present evidence, may supporting evidence ka talaga, then the court will render a judgment based on what you do. Ganun na ngayon. There is no longer that ano, provision on amendment to conform with the evidence. And let me quote for you that portion. No amendment of such pleading deemed amended is necessary to cause them to conform to the evidence. So I will repeat for the last time, so kahit na itong allegation in the pleading, ay iba doon sa napatunayan sa ebidensya. Let's say for example, 800, uh, the claim is uh, the claim is 500,000, then what was proven is 900,000. Can the court render a judgment? Yes. Whether in the old rule, whether in the present rule. That is why amendment to conform with the evidence already lost its value. Wala na po yun. Okay? Now, let us now move on to the next topic. Uh, na-discuss ko na po yan. Extension of time to file an answer. Again, ano sabi ko? You're entitled to one extension of 30 days. So, period to file an answer, 30 days. Then, you're entitled to extension of 30 days. Now, how about other pleadings? The general rule, prohibited pleadings. Unless ma-justify mo sa court. Okay? Even if you filed out of time, it's for the court. But again, that's a prohibited pleading. Now, the next. Let us now move on to my, uh, following my outline, let us now move on the manner of filing. Okay, o bago kong basukin yung manner of filing, ha, update ko lang kayo dun sa changes sa periods ng konti. Sabi ko sa inyo, 30 days to file an answer, 15 days to file a reply, eh papano yung ano, period to file an answer to a counterclaim. Based on the old rule, 10 araw yan. Based on the present rule, 20 days. Nakita nyo? Answer to counterclaim. Ulitin ko, sa old rule, 10 araw. Sa present rule, sagot mo sa counterclaim ay ano? 20 days. Yun ang period. Humaba po. Now, how about supplemental complaint? Period mo sumagot. Okay? Supplemental complaint. 15 days lang. Pero, pag pinag-uusapan natin, amendment as a matter of right, 30 days to file an answer. Okay, now, let us now move on to manner of filing. Ito po, maraming pagbabago rito. Maraming pagbabago rito sa manner of filing. We're on schedule. Uh, maganda po yung ating progress. We are now on Rule 30. Okay? Our progress is just right. Hindi tayo nagmamadali and hopefully I'm able to explain it to you uh, in a manner that you could understand na hindi tayo nagmamadali. Okay? The manner of filing. I am now referring to Rule 30. Meron ba tayong nabago dun sa, ano, sa, sa 11? Diniscuss ko na yun yung mga periods. Yung 12, meron ba tayo? Gender lang, tsaka calendar based yan. So, 13 tayo ngayon. 13 is filing. Dito, maraming sa inyo, lalo na yung mga practitioners na nakikinig sa akin, matutuwa dito. Okay, matutuwa ang practitioners dito. Yung mga studyante, aralin nyo talaga. Dumami ang aralin nyo. Actually, kumaba. Kumaba ang aralin nyo. But still, it's good because that will improve our justice system. It will make everything faster. Oh, ito, tandaan nyo. Manner of filing. Ano na? Ang manner of filing natin, originally, old rule, ano yun? Old rule. Personal filing or filing by registered mail. How about ordinary mail? Wala po tayong filing ng ordinary mail. Yung ordinary mail is a service po yun and still there. Bakit? Because there are still some areas in this country where they do not have a registered mail facility. That's why it must get there. It was retained. Oh, sasabihin mo, oh. Nandun, tingnan nyo sa section 6, last line ng Rule 13. Nandun pa po yan. Okay, now, ano yung nadagdag? Ito ngayon, manner filing, number 3. So, personal, registered mail, accredited courier. Okay, accredited courier. O, bago ko magpatuloy, alam nyo naman to. UPS, DHL, Express Mail, alam nyo yun? Ano po ba yung mga iba? DHL, UPS... Basta may express mail na yan, di ko na memorize lahat eh, no? Yan ho yun. Okay? Ngayon, tandaan nyo po, ang maganda dito, bibigyan ko kayo ng background ng, in the past, how we do it. Based on the old rule. Dahil nga, ho ang pwede lang personal or registered mail. Pag hindi kami uh, aabot, dahil sa ang daming papailan, i-registered mail ho minsan yung filing at ang personal, ano yan, registered mail filing at ang service registered mail. Nangyayari ho yan. Ngayon, syempre, it will take time for the court to get a copy of your filing. And maybe the court will say, oh, did he file? Ganun yun. So what we do before the amendment, ito, no? the effective ngayong araw, may one. Okay? Ang ginagawa namin, file namin ng registered mail, 
Thereafter, the following day, we file a manifestation informing the court that we file it by registered mail. And sometimes, because of the distance, what we do, either itatakbo yun by uh, personal, okay, or yung manifestation na yun would be filed also what? Together with the express courier. Or dun sa araw na yun, if I file ko, kanyari ngayon po ang deadline, no? ang gagawin ko ngayon, express courier ko na, i-registered mail ko, magastos ko suyo. Express courier na, hoping na bukas matanggap ng husgado. But again, kung bukas yung matanggap, that's already late filing, di ba? Because in registered mail, the date of mailing is the date of filing. So noon ho, panigurado lang namin yan. Yan nga accredited courier, kasi wala po yan noon. Ngayon, nandyan na. So attorney, ano mga halaga niyan? Ito na halaga niyan. The date of mailing by accredited courier is the date of filing, parang registered mail. So ganun yun, pag ginamit, pag accredited courier ka ngayon, ngayon, apay pe pwede na. You already, you filed it on time. Because before this amendment, filed out of time ka. Basta hindi yung natanggap ng hosgado dun sa regulamentary period na wala. But today, it was what? Pattern to the same as registered mail. I will repeat, in registered mail, the date of mailing is the date of filing. In accredited courier, the date of mailing by accredited courier is the date of filing. Okay, maliwanag yun. Kaya saan ko makikita yun? Nasa section 3 po yun. Nasa section 3 of Rule 13. Now, let us look at this. Doon po muna tayo, ha? Uh, the next one, ano yun? Yung electronic means. Okay? Yung sinasabi natin electronic means. Pwede ka na rin mag-file ng electronic means. Ngayon, sasabihin na iba, i-equip ba? Kaya nga po, tingnan nyo doon sa section 3 of Rule 13, yung last line doon sa enumeration na yun, yung first part, nakalagay doon, for as long as the court is electronically equipped, okay, electronically equipped po dapat ang usyado. Ngayon, syempre alam ng Supreme Court, may mga areas dyan na hindi electronically equipped. So I expect that there will be a circular or there will be a uh, a, a court uh, issuance on this matter later on, lalo na pag in na nila mga court. In fact, I know that because of this COVID situation, for criminal cases, nung nagsimula ng Supreme Court, naglabas na sila ng issuance chat. Only for criminal cases. Okay? So, kung meron, if the court is electronic equipped. Now, what is the date of, uh, what is the date of filing then? Well, the date of transmission. E sabihin mo kung paano ko, 11.29 ng gabi, basta, yung araw na yun. The law doesn't make any distinction. You read Section 3, Rule 13. For as long as it's transmitted on that day. Siyempre, if I press it now, maya-maya, nandun na yun. Eh. Pag pindot ko ngayon, andun na yun. Pakikita mo, send, di ba? Ganun yun. In your, out, in your, in your send back. Ganun yun. Okay? And you could print that out as proof. Now, let us now look at the proof of filing. Hindi ko na ako sasabihin yung personal tsaka registered mail. Sa regular review ko yun. Sinasabi ko lang yung amendment. Anong patunay that it was filed itong uh, accredited courier madali po yan lalo na yung mga may experience di pag accredited courier to prove it number one by the affidavit of the person mailing number two syempre nagbayad ka accredited courier may OR yan at pangatlo yung tracking number yung mga sanay dyan ako po yung sabi na ah, may tracking number Ganyan. kasi pag tracking number they will be able to track the pouch or the package or the document yan po yan now what is the proof of filing of electronic mail. The same, affidavit, okay, affidavit, second, or the pleading or document transmitted, okay, so affidavit and the pleading or document transmitted. Or in certain cases, that which is what? Personally acknowledged by the clerk court. Kasi how many times na pinadala mo na doon, may personal acknowledgement pa. Those are proof of your electronic transmission. Okay, so, dalawa na. Ang, ang filing po natin, nadagdagan na, ano, personal, as based on the original, registered mail. Now, the, based on the provisions of the uh, 2020 amendment, accredited courier. And next one is electronic mail. Okay? For as long as the court is electronically equipped. Okay, now, let's move on. Dito pa rin po tayo sa outline natin. Dito na tayo sa modes of service. Now, let us look at this. As I tell my students, the modes of service contemplated by the provisions of the law is serviced by a party to a party. To the adverse party, to a co-party, that service to the party. Okay? Now, it is also possible that the court will serve. Okay? What does the court serve? The court will serve judgments, orders, resolutions. It will originate from the court. That is from the old section 9 
of Rule uh, 13 na didiscussin ko po sa inyo later on which is now parang section 12 na po ito okay section 13 na ngayon from the original section 9 section 13 didiscussin ko po yun so dalawang sinasakop pag sinabi service service sa kapwa mo party o service mo sa service ng husgado pwede rin po service ng party and because it's a petition or an appeal nagsiserve rin po siya sa ano sa mga court na nagrender ng decision ganun po yun okay now let us look at the modes of service po natin ang modes of service ha? based on the press of the old rule which was carried over to the new rule ano yun? personal by mail and by mail kasama po dyan ang registered mail and ordinary mail retained po yun yun ang original dinagdaga na po ng ano accredited courier okay and of course facsimile it's included and then electronic means ulitin ko po ha electronic mail ulitin ko so you personal ordinary ordinary mail registered mail accredited courier electronic means at yung pong kasunod nun ay facsimile okay and there is something that you have to take note dinagdag po ng court okay dinagdag po ito ng drafters ano yun? in addition to sa accredited courier and electronic means at fact ito yun. as provided for in international conventions to which the Philippines is a party. And this is more attuned to the Apostle Convention. Because nakikita na ng Supreme Court, napapunta na po doon ang service. That there is a central agency, one country and another, and there are recognized documents which are authorized certificates that once this is uh, provided for, that is considered as authentic. And the service is proper. Dandun na po tayo, kaya makita nyo may window. Now, let us look at the proof of filing. Ang i-cover ko lang po, Ang i-cover ko lang po ay yung bagong amendment. Okay? Yung bong bagong sinabi. Accredited courier, anong patunay mo na naserve mo? Sabi pareho rin. Na naserve ko, affidavit na nagpadala. Ano pa yon? OR, tracking number. How about electronic? Ganun rin po, the affidavit. And the proof of that it was transmitted. So, halos pareho po yon. Okay? The proof of filing. And the, pro, and the mode of service. And I'm referring to what section? I'm referring to section 17. And doon po sa practitioner, alam po na hindi naman kayo masyadong ano rito dahil you have staff, you have employees. Pero sa mga nag-aaral ng batas, na alam po maraming nakikilig. Importante yan. Yan, proof of service and proof of filing. Meron pa yung completeness of service. But I don't want to confuse you at this point in time. Pag, nag- pag nag-review na tayo. Okay, now, let us now proceed with Attorney, you have been harping on ano, no? harping on electronic means of service. Okay. Before I continue, kindly take note that based on the amendment, the service could be made upon a party or his counsel or a person who is authorized as appearing in the pleading. So, hindi na lang limited yan sa party at as counsel of record. Okay? Pati doon sa what? A person duly authorized as appearing in the pleading. Attorney, isa pong sinasabi mo kanina, lagi mong sinasabi, is yung electronic means na pinadala na. Yan ba, kahit na sino kami, pwedeng gumamit. Wait. The parties would have to consent. And that is provided for in Section 9 of Rule 13. Okay? And let me go to your portion. Service by electronic means. In fact, simile. Shall be made if the party concerned consent. So, kailangan mag-consent. Kasi kaya hindi siya mag-consent. Eh, wala siyang facility nun eh. Mahina ang wifi niya. Wala siyang capacity. So, kailangan mag-consent siya. Alam niya na padadalan siya. Okay? And at the same time, kindly take note, okay? That service by electronic means by sending shall be made by sending an email, no? Requires not only consent and agreement of the parties or upon the direction of the court. Tandaan niyo po ninyo yun. So, pwedeng i-direct ng usgado, but you have to inform the court kung wala kayo. But again, for this facility to be availed of by the party, there should be consent of the parties. And that is found in Section 9, Rule 30. Para makita nyo, you could refer to that. Now, and because we're talking of electronic ad, we're, we're, tron, we're talking of electronic means or electronic mail, okay? Andito na po ako, no? Electronic means or electronic mail. Nasa next, ano na po ako? Slide ko sa outline ko. You could change my slide. And I'm referring to what? Change of electronic address. Kindly take note, okay? That we have a duty or and the party has a duty to inform the court within a period of five days of change of email address or facsimile number. 
kailangan yun, duty natin yan to inform the court. Otherwise, and I'm referring now to Section 11 of Rule 13, okay, what appears on the record, yung naibigay ko na nun, mahigit ng walong buwan, nagpalit pala ako ng email, nagpalit pala ako ng fax number, hindi alam ng usgado, this is presumed to be valid. You cannot take it away from the court. You cannot contest the court. O sasabihin mo, hindi, hindi na huyan email ko, eh, ba't di mo sinabi? You have a duty to inform the court of the change of email address within a period of five days from the change. Now, there's one thing that I would want to call your attention on. Alam nyo, uh, kanina, dinidiscuss natin si Guccio, di ba? Yan, Section 7 yun. Ah, Rule 7, Section 3. Pinag-usap pa natin yan. Rule 7, Section 3. May kita nyo doon, doon sa original, sa old rule, alam nyo ba nakalagay po doon, that the lawyer, when he signs, commits to inform the court of his change of address. Otherwise, he could be disciplined by the court. Na wala po yun. Ibig ba sabihin yan, o yan, sa mga practitioners. Ang ibig ba sabihin po niya, aba, eh, kahit magpalit-palit ako ng address, hanapin niyo ako, ah, hindi po. Because there are jurisprudence on the matter, and as our oath, as part of our oath as a lawyer, we should not cause delay in the dispensation of justice. Eh, yan pong pag-inform sa usgado, of your change of address is part of your commitment to help expedite proceedings in court. Kasi pa, paano magpuproceed ng usgado? Balik lang ako ng konti, no? Kasi sa old rule, kaya ako napas, napasok yan. Naalala ko yan. Kaya napasok yan. Nung bago po akong lawyer, may mga law, may mga, dahil wala pa yung provision na yan. I was a lawyer in 1992. Wala pa yung provision na yan. May mga lawyer, sabay, tagal na na pala nagbalit ng opisina. Wala. Kaya pala, all of the notices sent by the court, ibalik na balik. Tapos sinasabi ng judge, ah, saan yung kakalaban mo? Ba't di umapit? Hindi ko po alam and later to learn that he has changed his address. But the court cannot do anything about it. That's why you have the 1997 rule wherein it says, if you fail to inform the court of the change of address, you could be disciplined. Pero po nawala yan. But it doesn't mean your obligation is no longer there. My position is, that is still an obligation to inform the court of the change of address. Otherwise, mga humadimanda tayo ng isa pibo. Okay? Now, so that is what? Change of address. Let us now move on to discuss ito po, no? pag-usapan naman natin yung uh, presumptive service. Yan. Makakatulong to. And, and for students, this is good to know the concepts. For practitioner, we should know this. Because this will affect us. Okay? Maapektuhan tayo. At yung mga judges, alam ko po, na mabuti ito sa kanila. Bakit ito mabuti sa kanila? Because the very moment, and this is a provision that is section 10 of Rule 13, is a provision that has a very narrow application. Ito pong presumptive service na to, just to give you a, histo a historical background. This was, uh, ayaw ko sabihin copied, or maybe the idea was taken from the litigation practice of Quezon City. Meron po kasi sila doon. I was also part of that. Meron yan. Na, yung pong presumptive notice, if the court, as appearing on the record, issues a notice of setting, no? a court setting, Pag the court doesn't need to show na natanggap mo. Because there is presumptive notice after if you are within the judicial region, pag nasa judicial region po kayo, no? if it has been mailed for at least 20 calendar days prior to the scheduled date of you. So, kung na na-send na po ito, meaning, I'll give you an example. Um, my hearing is um, National Capital Judicial Region. No? Ang kaso ko po sa Manila, okay, ang, ang, ang Manila po iyon. Ang kaso ko nasa Manila. Tapos po, let's say, nasa Paranaque po ako nakatira. Isang judicial, uh, isang judicial region po po yan. Okay? National Capital Judicial Region. But iba ho judicial station doon. But that is still under the National Capital Judicial Region. So, pag nagpakawala sila doon ng notice of setting, okay, of court setting, at mahigit, uh, at least 20 days before the setting, dapat nandun ako. Okay? I should be there. Eh, hindi eh. Maaaring hindi ko natanggap. Maaaring hindi ko doon. But that is the uh, presumptive notice given by law. Okay, so that cases cannot be delayed. Eh, anong dapat mong gawin as a lawyer? Eh kahit dahil active ang kaso mo, paminsan-minsan, check-in mo naman. Patawag mo yung sekretary mo, pag nandun pa may hearing, kayo check mo yung musgado. Kung may setting. Okay? That's why you have that. And if, but if the party, take note, is, is what? Outside of the judicial region or the addressee. If the addressee is outside of the judicial region, 30 days. Pag napadala na po yan, at least 30 days before the hearing, presumptive notice. So this is a, a, a provision that has a very narrow application. So kung pinadala po yan sa Albay, 
ang kaso natin sa Manila, baka lang pas po, at least 30 days before the hearing, dapat ini-expect ng usgado mapirda. Because there is what you call presumptive notice. Okay, now let's move on to the next topic in my outline. And my next topic is service of judgments and final order. Ito po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. Okay? And this is based on the old rule. Ano nga po ito? This was the old section 9 of rule 13. But under the present rule, this is now section 13 of rule 13. Okay? Na-adjust po. May mga binago eh. May mga pinasok na provision. Now, ano ba nagdagdag? Tandaan po natin ito. It is the court. So if there are judges here, ang, ang pinadadala po nilang kalang order, resolution sa papano, personal service, o sheriff, padala mo yan. Process server, padala mo yan. Or by registered men. Ganyan po yan. That's the old rule. Is it still the rule today? Yes po. Ano na dagdag? Ito lang. If, okay, a party wants to avail of accredited courier na nahaloko, okay? O nalaman niya for one reason, no? Dahil na una, mas malapit siya na natanggap niya. Hindi pa nakikita ng kabila. He could apply ex parte upon an ex parte motion for service of the order, okay? Or judgment or resolution by express courier or by an accredited express courier. But kindly take note, he has to shoulder the expense. So lalabas dyan, kung husgado magpapadala lang, ano mangyari doon? Personal tsaka registered mail pa rin. Lanag. Pero kung uh, gusto mo na gamitin ng husgado ang accredited courier services, you will have to file an ex parte motion in court. And you will have to shoulder the expense. Okay? The next topic tayo. Ito, no? Let us look at this. Okay? How about an instance wherein a court is electronically equipped. Pwede ba yun? If the court is narating tayo doon, but the uh, the amendment already incorporated it. Kasi may mga, talagang may mga judicial stations na electronically equipped na. But kindly take note, the court, it is now allowed. So later on, maaaring uh, electronically equipped na yung mga usgado, lahat tayo, no? The court may electronically serve orders and documents to all parties. Okay? Pwede na yun. Kaya lang, the duty of the court is there should be a paper copy of the order or other document electronically served that should be what? Retained and attached to the record. So what is electronically served? Dapat may printout yun nakalagay sa record. Okay? Or that remains to be attached to the record. Yung mismo pinadalang electronically. Okay? Can you take note of that? But now, syempre, that would depend on the uh, situation on whether or not the court is electronically served. Now, another important point, okay? Another uh, innovation. This is what? In Rule 13, Section 14. Ano po ito? This is completely new provision. Conventional, according to our list, ano? Sa ating outline. Conventional service or filing of orders and pleadings and other documents. Now, attorney, ano itong conventional, ano? Filing. Sinasabi lang dito, may mga ibang dokumento unless permitted ng usgado to be served electronically, okay? It will it will not be served electronically. Itong mga to, kung anong conventional way of filing or serving, yun pa rin po ang masusun. Okay, what are those? Initiatory pleading, of course, like a complaint. Responsive pleading, and an example is an answer. Ano pa? Protective orders, ay dapat yan. Conventional way of service. Protective orders, writ of attachment, Rate of execution, rate of preliminary injunction, eh, may kailangan dalhin na yun. Traditional way of doing it, no? Supina, because that's a compulsory process, kailangan dalhin yan ng process server or ng sheriff. Or those documents, which because of its volume, and it's, uh, it's so many that it cannot be scanned or electronically scanned, no? yung ginagawa na natin ngayon, then conventional filing. Po. And those documents which are intended to be sealed and are considered as confidential, shall also be one. Consider this confidential, conventional filing. Okay? So, na-cover na natin yung Rule 13. We have substantially covered Rule 13. Dito na po tayo sa summons. Okay? Summons na tayo. Ready pa ho ba kayo? Isang oras at kalahati na tayo. We have been discussing in an hour and a half. Siguro, you could uh, bring something. Kinauhaw na kayo. And uh, I'll, I'll continue. Okay pa naman ho ako. And, um, Sabi nga ng mga kasama ko sa Rex, basta sabi ko lang mag-break, pero I'm still okay. I'll continue. Okay? 
Now, let us look at uh, summons. And this is rule 14. The, the rule numbers still the same. Kaya lang matutuwa kayo dito, lalo na mga practitioner, maraming nagpago. At the mindset or the policy of the law or the rule is to really expedite. At may nagtanong nga sa akin, abogado, talaga mag gusto i-acquire jurisdiction sa defendant? Oo. Para lang tumuloy ang kaso at hindi lang yung technical yung mga technicalities na lang maglabanan. Dahil kung may kaso ka talaga, may depensa ka, harapin mo. Okay, tingnan natin ha. Okay, of course, for law students listening to me, mas dadami ang aralin natin. Okay, but that's okay. That's part of learning. Now, let me start with Section 3, okay, of Rule 14. Ano yun? Ito yung amendment. Who should serve? Sino ba dapat nagsaserve ng summon? Of course, hindi na bago. From the old rule to the present rule, sheriff, deputy sheriff, process server. Pero po may dagdag. The plaintiff can be what? Authorized to serve together with the sheriff. I will repeat. The plaintiff could be authorized to serve together with the sheriff if there is failure of service of someone. Aba, kung may failure of service of someone, sabi mo, Tori, ba't nagkakaganon? Eh kasi nga, alam mo, ang tayo namang mga Pilipino mabayad at mapakiusap. <laughs> so siyempre, pag yung kami naman, kahit ako, ginagawa ko, lalo na pag masela ng kaso, gusto ko may kasama yung, uh, not that I do not trust, na may kasama yung magsaserve na kasama namin para mamamonitor namin kung anong gagawin natin kung something goes wrong. Okay? But, okay, the provision now allows no, sa Section 3 that if there is failure, kasi huwag muna muna, bumalik ka na lang dito, Sheriff. No. Sa ngayon, ang mangyayari, if there is a failure, the court can authorize the plaintiff. Samahan mo si Sheriff. Kayo mag-serve na. Okay, now, let us now look at eh, papano another scenario? which is also covered by the present rules, the same section. Paano kung yung isa-servan mo ay taga, ano, taga Mindanao? Ang kaso nasa Manila. Before this provision, bago, balik muna tayo sa old, ganito po ang sistema niya. Well, nagko-communicate ang uh, local court doon sa court sa Mindanao, pati full take time. But there were times na hihingit ang authority ang sheriff, gagastusan mo siyang lumipad doon, magsaserve ng summon. Pero alam ng clerk of court yun, lahat transparent yun. You will give the expenses, and then the, they will give an accounting. That's a jurisprudence for you. Pero ngayon, pwede po ngayon, ano na, the plaintiff shall be authorized to cost the service of someone. Imagine nyo. Now, hindi na si sheriff ang pupunta no? The court can authorize, out because this is outside of a judicial view. The plaintiff can be authorized. Kaya lang, because you have been authorized. Paano na authorized ang ano? For service outside of the judicial region. If there is failure, of, of service by the sheriff, the uh, plaintiff is authorized together with the sheriff to serve, to be with the sheriff to serve. Of course, there could be a window for misrepresentation. And the provision covers it. Kinover po ng provision. Nagkaroon ng window ng baka may misrepresentation. Eh kung ganun, kung may misrepresentation, be very careful. Your case, if you are the plaintiff, syempre, you're interested with your case. Your case will be dismissed with prejudice because you made the misrepresentation on the service of someone. What else? All of the proceedings so far conducted will be declared as null and void. Okay. And number three, the plaintiff could be met with sanctions. Naku, mahirap. Huwag natin bibiruin at huwag natin lolokoy ng kusgado. The next, outline po natin, is, nandito na tayo, sa next slide na pala tayo. Nasa summons na tayo. Sana na-turn nyo na, no? Summons. I have discussed issuance of summons. Okay? Let us look at the issuance of summons. Muna, okay? Yung issuance of summons. What about issuance? Nauna yung misrepresentation eh. Dito tayo sa issuance. Kindly take note that it is the duty of the clerk of court to issue summons within a period of five days. From, syempre nirarapol yun, napapadala sa judge. Di po ba? Nararap, magrarapol muna sa executive judge, tapos na-assign na yun, within five days, gagawa na siya dapat ng ano, summons, and it will be served. Our experience as practitioners, pag ganyan, siyempre, follow-up, follow-up tayo sa court, kasi si Sheriff, baka maraming siya siya We queue, we fall in line, but now it appears, and we are very happy about this, within five days, from the filing and payment of the fees. Dapat marapol na yun, of course, and then, summons should be served. Okay? So, napag-usapan na natin, issue of summons, 
ano pa, who should serve summons. And the third one is misrepresentation. The next one is summons is returned. Okay? Let us look at this next point. What if summons is returned unserved on any or all of the defendants? Okay? So marami multiple defendants nangyayari po yan. Ano? Multiple defendant, nakaserve ng iba or nagserve sa isa, hindi ho naserve ang lahat. Ilan lang na naserve ang Ano mangyari? This is the court can order the plaintiff. Sabi ng court, eh, mahirap, mong mahirap, ano, isa lang na serve. Anong gagawin? The court can order the plaintiff to serve someone based on the provisions of the law. Pwede. So, ano yung mga instances na pwede mag-serve ng someone sa plaintiff? Number one, there is failure of service of someone. The plaintiff can be authorized together with the, with the sheriff. Number two, another instance would be when the defendant is outside of the judicial region. Pwede rin. Pasabihin ng court, oh, the plaintiff is duly authorized. Number three, the court shall order the plaintiff okay, if to serve summons, the plaintiff shall be authorized. Kung ano nangyari, merong isa o dalawa sa multiple defendants na hindi naserve. Okay. Now, ipapano kung sinabi ng court, oh, plaintiff, you have to serve. Ah, pito ito, pito. E dalawa lang na servant pa lang ng sheriff. Eh. Gawin mo na yan, ha? Sinabi. Eh, hindi ginawa ni plaintiff. What happens to the plaintiff? The case will be dismissed without prejudice. Okay? But it is special. That is rule, still on Rule 14, Section 3. Now, let us look at validity of summons. Dito, maraming matutuwa dito. Bakit? Bago ko bigay yung bagong rule, ha? Kasi noon, yung old rule, ganito. Pag serve once, pag unsuccessful, gagawa ng return si sheriff. Gagawa yun, ng return. Tapos, together with that, ibabalik yung summons. So therefore, the plaintiff alias, first alias summons. Type na naman yan. Gagawa na naman. Sa-serve na naman. Pag-serve, successful na naman. Gagawa na naman ang return sheriff. Balik. Third, fourth, fifth. There are instances like that. I've seen cases like that. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Meron ako nakita. Eight alias summons. Sa present rules, wala na po ngayon na. Once a summons, once the summons is issued by the clerk of court within five days, from what? Filing? within five days from filing and payment of docket fees, ano mangyayari? Within five days na yan, dapat nag-issue sa ng summons and that summons will be effective until it is served. Okay? So, effective yun. So, paano kung lumampas ng isang taon? Okay. Kaya lang, tagal na nun. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo nagtututuhan. Kung plaintiff ka, dapat nagpa-authorize ka na. Paano kung tumagal? Ah, effective pa yun. You don't need to apply for alias summons. Your summons, once served, is effective until it is served or until it is recalled by the court. Maliwanan. The only instance today, okay, under the present rules, napapayag ang husgado. Okay? Napapayag ang alias summons is when the summons has been lost or destroyed. Okay? That, has, that was based on the original Section 4, Rule 40, which is now still the same Section 4 of Rule 40. Okay? Nag-iba lang epekto. Ang alias summons, again, pwede na lamang if it has been lost or destroyed. Now, another, uh, alam nyo, another issue na laging uh, napag-uusapan, hindi lang ang mga studyante at nagtatanong dito, even lawyers like us, we've had experiences of that. Yung mga, uh, yung defendant, oh, ayaw ko tanggapin, ha? Andiyan, ayaw ko tanggapin. And there is no um, explanation in the law or even a definition on what is tender of someone. Dito ba? Walang paliwanag yun. Okay. So, we rely on just uh, practical experience. Nakakita nga ako, binabato eh. Doon sa lublong bakod eh. May iba doon, iniiwan, sinisingit doon sa ano. Oh, ito na, ay, iwan ko, sisingit doon sa gate. Or iiwan doon sa lalagyan na ng mail. Or iiwan sa harap niya. Ano ba ngayon? It has already been defined. Okay? Tender of, of someone. Sa mga studyante, this could be a good question. Okay? Sa ating practitioners, ito po yun. It should be served within the view. Okay? And in the presence of the defendant. Kung ayaw mo, it should be within the view. Pag pinanggihan yan, it should be within the view and presence of the defendant. Hindi pa pwede uh, nakalagay, ha? And in the presence of the defendant. Hindi pa pwede iwan ko lang dyan. Hindi pa pwede yun. Kasi dapat either tanaw and in the presence of, within the view and the presence of the defendant. And where is that found? Section 5 of Rule 15. Okay. The next item to discuss will be substituted service. Yan na po tayo substituted service. At that, under the old rule, can you take note of this? Huh? Under the old rule, 
ang substituted service ay sa individual lamang. Okay? Tandaan nyo yun. Under the old rule. Pero pwede nyo nang kalimutan yan, old rule yun. Okay? Noon, di ba? Uh, substituted service to a person with suitable age and discretion residing therein. Okay? And in his office to a person in charge nyo. Ganun yun. Pero ngayon, may substituted service pa rin. Pero makikita nyo later on, pati sa juridical, private juridical entity, it is more or less the same concept. Although hindi sinabing substitute. I will explain to you. Okay? Now, let me start with this. Sa individual tayo. Ha? Individual substituted service. So, the, the the effort for service of someone on the service of someone should have been ito yung tao is a servant and sharing. Pag tinanggihan yan, nag-refuse, itetender ko. Now, kunyari, eh, hindi ko makita, pinuntang ko sa opisina, hindi ko makita, yun ang nakalagay dun sa complaint, ako ang sheriff, anong dapat kong gawin? Okay, this provision, makita nyo, mahaba, no? Mahaba. This is the present section 6. Mahaba. Alam nyo kung bakit? This was lifted from the Manoto case. Okay? This was lifted from the Manoto case. So, paano kayo ng substituted service? So, dito, in-outline na po yung substituted service. Number one, is service in his residence to a person of sufficient age and discretion residing therein. And the person there who is of age should be at least, according to the provision, 18 years of age. Nakalagay na. Yung old rule kasi sufficient age and discretion. Ngayon, ang nakalagay, resident to a person at least 18 years of age. Okay? So, pag mababa sa 18, hindi pwede. Under the old rule, pwede. Kasi noon, bukas eh, sufficient age and discretion. Kahit na 15, 16, pero mukhang may sufficient age and discretion, pwede and residing therein. But now, at least 18 years of age, 18 years of age, and what? Residing therein. Okay. Now, second, kapano pag sa opisina? By leaving a copy to a person in charge of the office. Regularly in charge of the office. And based on the case of Manoto, ano ha? Based on the case of Manoto, ito, yun ho, hindi nakalagay. Okay? Ano yun? President or general manager. However, they expanded the definition of a competent person in the office. And a competent person in the office is someone who customarily, okay, receives correspondence for the defendant. Yun ho. So, in-expand pag sa opisina yung definition ng ano, competent person. You could leave it with the president or general manager according to jurisprudence. But kaya ang pagka-wording ng batas, ganito po, a competent person includes, sabi, but is not limited to one who customarily receives correspondence for the defendant. So, expanded yung definition ng competent person. Kindly take note, ha? You will, we will meet competent person again. Kaya lang, ikokol ko na attention ninyo as of now. Here, it is an expanded definition of competent person if service in the office of the defendant. However, for private juridical entity, I will repeat, for private juridical entity, the service to a person customarily receiving the same mails for them should only kick in if there is a refusal of the person enumerated as those authorized to refuse. Paliliwanan ko further yun. Magkaiba. Dito kasi, kasama siya sa definition ng taong pwede tumanggap o substituted. Yung customarily receiving correspondence. But in corporations, private juridical entities, that will only, this will only kick in if, what, service was not made upon president, general manager, managing partner, corporate secretary, treasurer, in-house counsel. Or, wherever they may be found or to their secretaries. It expanded. Doon ka lang pwedeng pumasok doon sa customarily receiving correspondence from them. Okay? So, here sa tao muna tayo. Again, living with his residence. Okay? A person at least 18 years of age. Right? And residing therein. In his office, a person, a competent person in charge thereof. That includes in its definition a person who customarily receives those types of uh, communications or processes. And the next, ito yon. Ito yung kinover. Alam ko na maraming matutuwa sa inyo, lalo na kung kayo'y plaintiff. May mga instances at marami na po tayong narinig na ito, kaya may konting jurisprudence din ito. Ay, ayaw papasokin sa subdivision eh. Because sabi doon, pagtawag doon, ayaw papasokin sa subdivision. Sabihin, oh, huwag mo papapasokin ha. Ah, sabihin mo mayari. So, hindi ka makakapasok. The sheriff will be outside of the village. Another example will be condominium. The person is on the 24th floor. Uh, sir, meron mo naghanap sa inyo, tiga court now. Pwede ko ba maka? Hindi, hindi, hindi. Huwag mo makakitin dyan. That's why there is what? The always defective service of summons. But in the light of the mandatory provision, okay, 
pe pwede na, you could leave it to any of the officers of the homeowners association or the condominium corporation or the chief security of the building or the community. Nakita nyo, wala ka talagang lusot pag service of someone. Okay? Iiwan mo sa community yun, ano? Officers of the homeowner or condominium corporation pag wala pa rin the chief of the security of the community or the building. Now, Now, let us look at the last one. Another mode of service. Substituted ito. Substituted. Ano yun? By sending by electronic mail. But this should be with the permission of the court. If allowed by the court. Maaring unsuccessful ka doon sa mga binanggit natin. Okay? Pero walang express provision na refusal. Eh. So, for now, susundin natin yan na ganun ang proseso. Susubukan mo sa bahay, sa opisina. Tapos, eh, susubukan mo kung nasa village siya o condominium yung gagawin mo. But if you are unsuccessful, you could ask for permission from the court. That could be your last resort. Electronic na po. Electronic pwede. If permitted by the court, you could serve someone electronically. Actually, nagawa ako na po yan. But that is kasi, before this amendment, that was allowed for foreign juridical entity. And still allowed, nagawa ko po yan. For a defendant who resides in the U.S. Okay, now, let us now move on to service upon a private corporation or specifically upon a domestic okay upon a domestic private juridical entity okay now anong sabi dito tingnan niyo ha yung pa rin ba mga tao na yon under the old under the old rule kasi po yan if i'm not mistaken that section 11 of rule 13 under the present rule gumalaw lang na isang section naging section 12 of rule 14 Service should be made upon the president, general manager, managing partner, corporate secretary, treasurer, in-house counsel. Yun po yun. Pero sa old rule, nagtapos na ron. Pero po sa present rule, ganito. Wherever they may be found, ah, lagi yan do sa sports club. Ah, lagi yan do sa bar. Pwede? Pwede. Wherever they may be found. Palakalagay po. Or, in their absence, al po, sa mga secretary nila. And with this amendment po, bumalik tayo sa 1964. Kasi po noon, sa 1964, maraming substantial compliance. Iwan mo sa executive secretary po. With, in 1997, strict rule yan eh. Pag hindi president, general manager, bank partner, corporate secretary, treasurer, in-house counsel, in proper service of summons to the corporation. But because of the so many complaints on difficulty on serving, nakita na Supreme Court po ito. So, nirelax po ito. Anong, anong nangyari? Wherever these individuals may be found, Okay. Tiyempohan mo siya. Pwede. Alam mo kung saan siya laging restaurant? Puntang mo. Pwede. Or, kung lagi siyang wala, lagi nasa abroad to their respective secretaries. Ganyan sabi mo, naku, hindi ko pa rin makita eh. Madulas talaga. Wala rin secretary. Okay. Wala rin secretary. Baka si mga imayang kumpanya, hindi na ako magsisekretary ngayon. Papano? Okay. Look at this. For private juridical persons, if the, the next topic service cannot be made on the foregoing. Okay? So, kung hindi pa pwede sa foregoing, you could use, okay, you could use what? Those persons who are, who customarily receives. Okay? Hindi mo ma-serve sa mga doon sa foregoing, there is even refusal, you could do it to the person who customarily receives. Now, kindly take note of my next point. Okay? You can, unlike sa individual, na pwede ka na mag-seek ng permission for the, from the court. Eh. Sabi mo, ay, hindi ho pwede. Dito, if there is refusal, you have to show before you avail of electron, by electronic means service of someone, there should have been at least three attempts on two different dates. Kailangan pakita mo sa court. And only then can you apply for electronic service of someone. Okay, now, how about service? How about service to a foreign juridical entity? This was originally Section 12. Okay, but now it is, it has been moved to section, okay, 14. Apo, section 14 na siya. Foreign juridical entity. Ano ito? Ah, wala ho tayong masyadong iwan dito. The, the provision is still more or less the same. Ano na dagdag? Pero ho may insertion. Dati, transacted business lang. Ngayon, dinagdag na or doing business under the laws of the field. The, the first paragraph. At dinagdag pa rin, aside from a resident agent, aside from its representatives in the Philippines, it could all, summons could also be served upon a director or trustee na kasama. Pareho pa rin po yung concept na yan. On the second paragraph, and this covers situation wherein the foreign juridical entity does not have a resident agent here. But actually, 
and not registered in the Philippines, but for one reason is doing business under our law or transacting business, kinapture na po lahat. Service of summons may be leave of court, be enumerated, hindi po na bago yun. Na-adjust lang ng konti ng arrangement. Apo. By electronic, pwede. By publication, okay? By publication, pwede po. But publication is in the foreign country where they are located and service by registered bear in the last one. Then by personal service, through the assistance of the Department of Foreign Affairs and by facsimile, okay? And other means as may be determined by the court. So yun po yun, wala masyadong nabago. Okay? Now, let us now move on to duty of counsel. Eh, ito po ang tilagang bago talaga. And I know, this is the concern of the lawyers. Eh. And for the judges who are uh, have been studying the rule, napapangiti sila rito. Bakit? Under Rule 14, Section 13, nangyayari, and let me illustrate it this way. Yung duty of counsel of record, usually ho, di ba? Imp- alam ng abogado, improper and service of commons, lalo na pagbasa niya ng return. Because it's the duty of the sheriff to deliver to the plaintiff a copy of the return within five days from service. Pag ito, oh, mali, nakita ng abogado. So, si siyempre, and then there is a summary hearing, let's say, for a PRO. Or uh, a hearing called by the court for one reason. Um, improper service of someone, so papasok si attorney. Your Honor, special appearance. Without submitting to the jurisdiction of the court, and he kept some bobbling and, and rumbling there, explaining the reasons why he's there. Under the present rule, the court may deputize that counsel of record to serve someone. <laughs> ah, umapir ka. O, oh, attorney. Ay, ko pala. Abogado ka, special appearance. Okay, I will deputize you to serve someone. And I will quote for you the exact wording. The counsel shall be deputized by the court to serve summons on his client. So, ang tanong nga ng ibang abogado, hindi eh, wala na ang lusot. Para nga. Para nga. Kasi ang mangyayari, if you appear, you're on a special appearance without submitting to the jurisdiction of the court. Sabi nila, oh, ikaw, abogado ka ba niyan? Abogado ka ng defendant na? Opo. Okay. Sabi mo, improper service of summons. Okay, I hereby deputize you. You serve summons to your client. Eh, paano? <laughs> okay. Now, so, but that is the provision of the law. That is Rule 13, Section 13. Now, let us now move on. Ang next topic po natin, turn na tayo ng susunod na slide. No? Yung nag-operate po sa atin, dito na tayo. Malapit na po tayo, we just have a few more items, pero nandito na tayo sa motions. Tingnan niyo po ito, ha? Motions na tayo. What about motions? Dito matutuwa po kayo. And I'm very happy dito sa mga pagbabago po nito. Kaya lang, baka mga judges, hindi po masyadong happy. Huwag po kayo magagalit. Pero yung mga practitioners, palagi ko happy po, magiging happy sila rito. Bakit? Una po, tingnan natin. Unang kilapit ng sabihin sa inyo. Wala na pong notice of hearing. So, unlike the rule, old rule 15, no? sa ngayon, wala nang notice of hearing. Kasi ho noon, di ba, pag walang notice of hearing, setting the date and the time, ako nagpa-file ng motion, I'm the movement, it will be a mere scrap of paper. That motion is only pro forma. Walang, uh, walang value yun. Pero ngayon po, hindi ko na kailangan maglagay niyan. Because only the court can set it for it. Discretion ng husgad yun. Pero pag ako, mag-file ako ng motion. Yung gusto ko, wala nang hearing. Kasi ho, doon ang delays eh. In the past, katulad nga po ng sinasabi ko, bilang bagong abogado noon, more than 20 years ago, papupunta nga ako, punta ka doon ha. Ano pong gagawin ko? Eh, may motion hearing eh. Nag-file ng motion yung kalaban natin, sigurado namang na uh, Ano yan, ibibigyan tayo ng period to come. Habaan mo na lang dahil marami tayong ginagawa. <laughs> so, mga 5 days, 10 days, 15 days, o oh, kung pwede, habaan mo pa. Ganun uyo, kaya tumatagal. Kaya tumatagal. So, ngayon, wala na po yun. We cannot set it. It's only for the court. Pag nakita ng court, there's a need to set it. Doon lang magsiset ang husgado. Now, motions in open court. Nakita niyo po? Motions in open court. Kindly take note that if a motion is made in open court, the court will have to act on it immediately. Okay? Immediately, pag naka, ah, anong motion mo? Okay, nag-argue-argue kayo doon. Sige, mag-argue kayo. Then the court will have to resolve it immediately. But again, th- there is a second paragraph. Not, not all motions have basis in facts on the record. Meron pa mga motion na bigla na lang lumilitaw dyan. Sinasabi ng abogado and there is no basis of facts on the record. So what can the judge do? O, hindi kayo mag-submit kayo ng affidavit or deposition. Or the judge can schedule the hearing whether partly oral, okay, partly oral, testimony, or by deposition. Sabi niya, mag-hearing tayo, pwede. Okay? So, but if it's an oral motion that the court could dispense with, 
uh, immediately the court will resolve it. But the only instance that the court could be fair on it, the resolution in it, if, uh, no, if there are facts not appearing on the record. Okay? If the motion is based on facts not appearing on the record, there may be flexibility and judge. Or sabihin, sabihin kaya pinimit, sabihin kaya deposition, o magpa-deposition lang kayo. Or, the judge could set it for hearing, partly, or wholly. Okay, now, now let us look at an important distinction. Ito po yung maganda dito. Yung tinatawag nating dinivide na, hindi katulad nun eh, pag naalala ko sa Rule 11, pag tinu- sa Rule 15, pag tinuturo ko yan. Uh, all motions should have a notice of hearing for as long as it will not affect adversely the interest of that person. It will not prejudice the rights of that person. Pero ko po pinaliliwanan yun. Pero ngayon, meron ng non-litigious and litigious. Pero po kahit ng litigio, non-litigious at litigious, wala akong notice of hearing. Hindi mang, ang, ang lawyer or amuvan, hindi kailangan yun. Now, it is a non-litigious motion to if it will not prejudice the rights of the adverse party. Ano yun? Motion for postponement. Motion for extension. Motion for issuance of alias sovereign. Motion for execution as a matter of right. Motion for issuance of writ of possession. Eh, Siyempre, sabi ng mga abogado, hindi ganito eh. Mapipigilan ka bang, magkailangan ka bang mag-file ng comment? Wala akong comment yan. Non-litigious. At hindi kayo re-require ng court mag-comment. Eh, hindi gusto ko eh. Ayan, wala akong magagawa. Ano yan? Option ng abogado yun. Wala akong magagawa, pero wala sa matas yun. The only motions that could be subject of opposition or comment, subject of opposition of, or comment, are what you call the litigious motion. Or those motions that will adversely affect the rights of the adverse party. Okay? Or will prejudice the rights of the adverse party. What are these? Motion for bill of particular, judgment of the pleadings, summary judgment, uh, motion for intervention, motion for new trial, motion for execution, motion for discretionary execution. Lahat po nang yan, ano yan? Litigious motion yan. And because these are litigious motion, kita nyo po, based on the outline, litigious motion, they will be what? Required. The other party will be fi- required to file if he wants to file. Okay? I would want to be very clear with you. Pwedeng sabihin niya, hindi na ako mag-file. But he is given by law to file his opposition within a period of five calendar days from receipt of the motion. So, hindi na kailangan sabihin ako, oh, file ka ng five days. Hindi na. Pag natanggap mo yon, yung motion, sinerve sa'yo ng kabila, party, because there's a duty to serve it to you. Tatakbo yun ng mga araw, file ka ng opposition. Now, with the opposition or without the opposition, it is the duty of the court to resolve the motion within a period of 15 days. Oh my God. No? 15 days po yan. So again, ulitin ko po, no? yung litigious motion, wala ng opposition yun. Pwede na i-resolve kagad ng usgan. Yung ano, yung, non-li- yung litigious po, non-litigious yun, ha? I'm sorry, non-litigious yun. Itong litigious, you will be given a period under the law. Five days, calendar days, to file the opposition form. With or without that, it is the duty of the court to resolve it within 15 calendar days from its receipt of the opposition or expiration of the period. Medyo, yun ho maganda. Kasi bibilis eh. Kasi yung minsan nagtatagal talaga because of the motions or resolutions of the motion. With all due respect po. Nangyayari po kasi yun. Now, let us now move on to the next topic. Okay, na-discuss po na po yung, na-discuss ko na yung ano, no? prohibited motions. Pero idadagdag ko na lang po rito, no? ulitin ko lang, motions to dismiss, except for the grounds that I've mentioned to you, motion to set the case for summary hearing of the affirmative defenses, motion for reconsideration on an action of the court on a uh, summary hearing, okay, on requ- in relation with affirmative defenses. Ano pa? Ito pa ho, Okay? Ito pa, ano yun? Yung pang motion to suspend, ginagawa ito ng iba, bugado, motion to suspend proceedings kasi hindi pa siya nakakuha ng TRO, preliminary injunction, next level court, prohibited pleading po yun. Ano ba prohibited pleading? Motion for extension of time, except it's an extension of time of an answer. One time, 30 days. Motion for postponement. The only postponements that will be allowed by the court are based on act of God, force manjure, and physical inability of a party or a witness to appear. Okay, yun lang ho. Hindi na pe, pwede kung ano-anong dahilan. But again, sasabihin mo, eh, depende naman sa judge. Well, if the judge will allow. That will be subject to the opposition of the other party. But based on the rules today, the only grounds for a postponement is what? Act of God, post jure, or physical inability of a witness to appear. Now, and kindly take note, based on the present provisions, 
Because at that point in time, during pre-trial, na-determine na po yung mga trial dates ng plaintiff at defendant. Eh, abot po tayo doon. Eh. Pag yan ay nagpapospone ka, tanggal ang isang araw mo. You are still bound to continue within the period you have committed to the court. Okay. Now, I will now discuss one more point. Wala po ito sa outline ko bago ko pumunta sa pre-trial. Ano yun? This is the last section of Rule 15 section. Kasi baka may naghahanap eh. Rule 15, Section 13. This is the last section. Ano yun? This is a provision na kung yung naalala nyo na po, naalala po ng mga estudyante. Yung Rule 16, Section 1, F, H, and I. Alam naalala nyo ba yung mga grounds na yun? Na binabangit ko, F, H, and I. Ano yun? Number one, rest judicata and statute of limitation. Payment, waiver, abandonment, or otherwise extinguished. And number, and I, unenforceable under the statute of fraud. Pag yan na-dismiss ka based on the ground, Okay? Siyempre, the dismiss dahil nag-file ng answer with affirmative defense. Hindi ka pwede mag-refile. Yun lang na sinabi. Eh, but that is established by jurisprudence. And reiterated, it was part of the old Rule 16, transposed, yun pa rin. Ano remedy mo? Hindi ka pwede mag-refile. Hindi appeal. Okay, appeal ka. Now, let us now move on to pre-trial. Attorney, malapit na ba tayo? Abay nakakadalawang oras tayo, malapit na po tayo. Pre-trial na tayo. And just for uh, some sort of guidance, para dun sa mga naiinip, ano, ha? for some uh, some sort of guidance, ang, for, ang amendment po kasi, ang bulk niyan, nasa Rule 6 hanggat dun sa Rule 35. Of course, yung applicability, nandun ho sa likod. Okay, sandali, sabihin ko na nga, baka magkalimutan pa tayo dito. Ang applicability po nito ay ito, ha? Sabi ng Supreme Court, nasa last provision po yan, ng rules of court na mababasa ninyo as amended, yung uh, salient portion po nun, may kita nyo sa likod that it will apply to cases to be filed after May 1. Okay? Cases to be filed after May 1, number 1, and those already pending. Okay? To the extent it's applicable. Okay? To those already pending, mag-apply na po yan. Unless, and this is the exact wording of the law, kukunin ko na, I will copy the word, opinion of the judge. Okay? That it will be to the best interest Okay, and justice, it will be for the best interest of justice that the old rule will be applied. Discretion niya yun, but in his opinion, not my opinion. So sa ating practitioner, sa ating practitioner, ang nag-apply na ngayon ay ano, itong 2020. Okay, 2020. For those cases to be filed and those cases which are pending. Now, let us now proceed. Dito na po tayo sa pre-trial. Okay, pre-trial na tayo. Dito rin ho maraming pagbabago Maraming pagbabago and kindly take note, the mindset of the drafters when they uh, suggested these provisions was really to expedite the proceedings. At yung pong marami, alam nyo, maraming uh, minsan may di natin may iwasan, mayroon ba talaga mga nagsasalita and sometimes masakit sa atin na practitioner. Okay, masakit sa atin na lagi umapit sa court na, eh di, wala naman, but minsan nakakarinig pa ako ng ganito and may use of practice. Eh bakit ka naman nagpaprak, naglilitigate pa yun? Nasa sayang lang ang oras ko. I've heard that a number of times. Pupunta ka doon, eh, naghihintay ka lang naman. Eh. Paghihintay ka, tapos kakansilahin ka rin naman. Eh. I've heard that. And when I hear that, syempre hindi ako masaya kasi talaga ako naglilitigit. And to see this now happening, masaya po ako. And I know that the practitioners and the judges, masaya po dito. Because this shows the direction of our court. The Supreme Court, talagang pabilisin na po ito. Kasi nang complaint eh, minsan, minsan nga kahit biro lang, masakit eh. Sabi eh, magkaso ka, di ba tagal? Sabi nila. Parang, parang yung, para ba yung practice mo yung walang value yung gano'n. So, now, it's it's very good na marami po tayong mga amendments na yun. Nakikita po na. Oh, let's look at the pre-trial requ- pre-trial. Sisimulan ko po ito sa issuance of what? The pre-trial notice. Okay? Issuance of pre-trial notice. Ano ba nakalagay? The issuance of pre-trial notice within five days. Okay? Within five days from the filing of the last responsive pleading. So, pag nag-file ng answer, bilang ng limang araw, pagkatanggap ng usgado, or may reply, because a reply was allowed, limang araw, ano, the court will issue what? A pre-trial notice. But should be what? No later than 60 calendar days from the filing of the last date. Okay? So, meron silang maximum. Dapat bilang sila, kasi syempre, hindi naman yung gagawin lang, basta bilang. Binibigyan sila ng margin. 60 days now, within 60 days. Dapat from the what? from the filing of the last responsive pleading, dapat accept na sila ng pre-trial. Nag-issue na sila ng pre-trial notice. Under the old rule, ganito po ito. Tignan ko, under the old rule kasi ganito. The plaintiff will have to file an ex-party motion to set the case for pre-trial. 
Yan po ang nakalagay dun sa Rule 18, Section 1, Old Rule. Tapos, yun lang po nakalagay. And then you have to apply the guidelines of 2004. Why? Because it says, from the filing of the last pleading, which is the re- maybe the reply, you ca- five days from the filing of the last pleading, the court, you will file your ex parte motion. And only if you don't file, will the court come in. Set the case for, issue a pre-trial notice. Ganun yun. And that is based on the case of City of Lapu-Lapu. Na inexplain na mas gano'n. Pero ho ngayon, umikli na. Kasi yung plaintiff, baka makalimot pa. Within five days from the filing of last meeting, but within 60 days from that last filing. Pero ito na lang, magulo pa yung 60 days, within five days. Dapat nag-issue na ang husgado ng ano, pre-trial notice. Now, what are the pre-trial requirements? Dito tayo, no? The next point. Pre-trial requirements, what are those? Ito po, lalo na sa mga practitioner dito, huwag tayo nga, huwag kayo mag-worry kasi ginagawa nyo na ito. This is something that you've been doing, we have been doing, and for, kaya lang mga studyante, <laughs> sarang amba, oh, mahaba ito. Nasa section 2 to eh, of rule 18, if I'm, not, I'm not mistaken, section 2 of rule, 15, of rule 18. Oh, tingnan nyo to ha, and I will explain it for the student na mas simple, kasi mga abogado, kabisado na to. Ang nangyayari, when we go to a pre-trial, preliminary marking, kaya nakita yung mark, their respective evidence. Marking, o oh, mark ka nga. Kaya yan, nagkakaroon ng pre-trial para hindi na i-mamark as the witnesses are presented in court. Next. To examine and compare. Okay, gagawin mo. And naturally, hindi naman nila iniiwan yung original. The originals are not left in court. So what is marked is the copy, which is a faithful reproduction of the original. And there will be what? An examination and a comparison. Kaya kailangan yun. And sometimes this happens before the clerk of court on a preliminary conference. Pwede rin po. Pero ito sinasabi. Sa pre-trial, pwede yun. Ito yung examine and compare. And then, or if it's a faithful reproduction and if it's genuine copy. Thereafter, ano yung pangatlo? You should manifest. Okay? Tinatali ka ng batas. Oh, I manifest that the copy is a faithful reproduction of the original. I manifest that that which was smart is genuine and authentic. Ganun po yun. So again, to mark, to examine and to compare, and to manifest. As to the genuineness and due execution, and the fact that it's a faithful reproduction. Okay, take note. Ito po, yung susunod, yung pong waiver of objections. Dito po tayo. Yung reservation, ah, binanggit ko sa inyo kanina, hindi ko na ulitin yun. Kindly take note of that. Window po yan ng practitioner. Na kung sakali talagang hindi, wala yung witnesses. Wala yung documents, may reservation portion, but you have to comply with the reservation of testimonial evidence and reservation of documentary object evidence. Hindi ko na po ulitin yan. Now, let us look at section what? Section 2. Still on Section 2. Mahaba yung Section 2, ha? Sa mga estudyante, mahaba yun. Kaya natin hindi isa-isa. What is that? Waiver of objections. As sa pag-uusapan natin, waiver of presentation of objections. Waiver of presentation of evidence. Okay? Ano yun? Una, tingnan natin. If the party or counsel fails to appear during pre-trial, ay, hindi pa, Tony, dapat dismiss na hindi. Hindi naman lagi na di-dismiss kung plaintiff or defendant, the plaintiff will be allowed to present ex parte. Hindi laging ganun. Maring na-dismiss lang. Wala kang dahilang naging absent. Si judge naman, ayaw naman, hindi naman di-dismiss. Ano mangyayari? Failure to appear during that period of pre-trial. You have waived your objections on the genuineness and due execution of the document. And if it is to compare whether it's a faithful reproduction. So, hindi mo na pwede contest. Absent you. Ganun yun. That's waiver of objections on the genuineness and due execution and if the document is a faithful reproduction. You are not. Now, the other one is waiver of presentation of evidence. What does it mean? Absent ka. Okay? Absent yung party and counsel or counsel. Without just cause, absent sila. Ah, hindi pala. Okay, ulitin ko. Hindi sila absent dito. Ang nangyari dito sa waiver of presentation of evidence, present sila pero they failed to bring okay I will repeat ha? they failed to bring the evidence so may nangyayari eh, attorney ready, judge ready ano po present ako red pero wala akong document eh. it is in uh, with the client or it has to be transported what happens the effect is waiver of the presentation of such evidence yun ang effect that is why anong makita nyo mindset dito ng batas or ng drafters dalhin na lahat sa pre-trial markahan na examine na compare manifest Pag wala ka doon, ano yun? Hindi ka na pwede mag-object. Yun ang ibig sabihin na. Kung wala ka, hindi ka na pwede mag-object. O pag hindi mo dinala, you are not able to bring it in court during the pre-trial, you cannot present that anymore. Okay? Hindi mo na magagamit. And kindly take note, okay, susundo na tayo. 
dito na tayo sa effect of failure. Sa mga attorney, alam ko na yan, dahan-dahan. This is still Section 5, okay? Still Section 5, but alam natin yan. And I always tell my students, take note of Section 4 and Section 5. At dito may nabago, ha? Yan Section 4 and Section 5. Bakit? Ano ba sinasabi ng Section 4? It is the duty of the party and counsel. Take note, party. Hindi na lamang, ha? Kindly take note. Hindi na lamang party. Naalala ko yan, under the old rule, gusto kong kliyente ko laging present. Eh. Kasi ayoko yung I'm armed with the authority. Dahil pag nahirapan ako mag-park, na late ako, baka ma-dismiss ang kaso ko. Or the plaintiff, or kung sa defendant, or sa ano ko, defendant ako, the plaintiff will be allowed to present evidence as well. Kaya maganda, present tayong dalawa. However, with the amendment, during pre-trial, not only is the party required to be present, the lawyer is also required to be present. So, absence of anyone will result to consequences. Ganun na ka-serious yan. Pati tayong abogado, kailangan present tayo and on time tayo. Okay, now, babalikan ko yung section 4. Ano sabi na section 4? It is the duty of the lawyer and the party to appear not only sa pre-trial, court annex mediation, and judicial dispute resolution. Duty natin umapir doon. At kung hindi tayo mga, hindi makakapiyang, dapat may representative duly authorized. Section 4 yun. Ayawanag? Now, punta tayo sa Section 5. Ito yung effect. Ito yung kadalasan na may memorize na subjective. Ano nga yun? Before, under the old rule, if the plaintiff is absent, napagsaraduhan ng court, nasa hagdanan na, ay natawag na ng bagong kaso, mahigpit si judge, ano yun? Your case will be dismissed. If you're the defendant, ganun na nangyari. Hindi ka, wala ka doon. Nung tinawag ng kaso mo, the plaintiff will be allowed to present But with the amendment, ito po ang amendment. The consequences applies to the lawyer and the party. Hindi na lamang sa party. And kindly take note, these consequences of dismissal and presentation of evidence ex parte against the defendant applies also not only during pre-trial absence, but also including court annex mediation and JDR. O, ito, hindi sa muna pulot yun. Walaan mo nakalagay. Sandali po, babasahin ko para precise tayo. Okay? Anong nakalagay? When duly notified, I'm reading section 5, the failure of the plaintiff and counsel to appear without valid cause when so required pursuant to the next preceding section. Okay, sabi. The next preceding section shall be cause of this week's hour. Ayan, no? So, in consequences na yan, mangyayari. So, you cannot ignore court and expedition. You cannot just ignore judicial dispute resolution. Okay. Now, ito pang maganda. Kasi noon, Okay, wala yung dependent. Kailan kaya ni, ni Judge Itseset yung ano? No? Kailan kaya ni, judge, ni judge Itseset yung plaintiff's presentation of evidence ex parte? Diba? Kailan kaya? Ngayon, based on the provision, within a period of what? Fifth, uh, ten days. Plaintiff to present her evidence ex parte within ten calendar days from termination of pre-trial. So, from the termination, kunyari, tapos na, pinerminate na ni Judge ang pre-trial noong araw na yun dahil hindi umapir ang defendant within 10 days okay from termination the plaintiff will be allowed to present evidence as part of it ganun na yun ang maganda so immediately once a pre-trial is done the defendant was not there okay presentation of evidence for the next 10 days okay and the judge will have an opportunity to render a judge now now let us look at okay the next topic okay we are now on the next slide sana nalipat nyo, no? nakirit away ako, nalipat nyo na dapat, nandito na tayo sa presentation of evidence and waiver. Okay? Presentation of evidence and waiver. We are just on our last two slides. So malapit na tayong matapos. We have uh, sufficient time and I hope you're still with me. Patapos ako tayo, dalawang slides na lamang tayo. The next question would be, in our slide would be, presentation of evidence and waiver. Ito po, Okay, this is in Rule 18. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Rule 18, Section 7. Rule 18, Section 7. Huwag kayong mag-worry dito itong presentation of evidence and waiver because this is this is already in the Judicial Affidavit Rule na inilipat lang po. It is the same as it. Ano yun? The direct testimony of the witness will be in the form of a Judicial Affidavit because in all civil cases, whether MPC, RPC, Judicial Affidavit na tayo, hindi ko pa mamasokan yung criminal procedure. Dito muna tayo. At mayroon ho nagtanong, bago pala ako ano, no, matapos at makalibot ang sabi. Ito, pa, paano naman yung karapatan ng usado? Hindi po, civil procedure ito. Okay, civil cases po ito. Yung criminal procedure po, 
covered po yun, may continuous trial, which is a supplementary circular of the Supreme Court that was issued in 2017. Iba po yun. Okay? Dito, in civil cases, in lieu of apo, direct examination, judicial affidavit. Okay? And of course, after the uh, affidavit, judicial affidavit is identified by the affiant, the witness, the witness will be ready for will be ready for cross-examination. Now, eh, paano kung absent yung uh, other party? Absent yung other party, he cannot conduct his cross-examination, of course. Ah, waiver yun. Okay, yun effect. And nasa judicial affidavit rule din yan. Waiver of objections on the question, and then question leading. Yung isang question, number eight, is leading. Ah, because yung objector. Oh, conclusions of fact, conclusions of law. That's a way, you are way, that's way. You cannot uh, object anymore. And you cannot conduct cross-examination. Again, siyempre may mga judges, very reasonable. O sige, bigyan natin one chance. Kawa ba naman? Okay? But again, this is the provision of the law. You cannot take it away. This is the provision of the rule. You cannot uh, take it against the judge pag in-apply niya rule. So we have to follow the rule to the letter. Now, this is another thing I think that we have to remember to help the practitioners and at the same time ang mga law, ang mga students matanda ninyo lalo na yung mga na-lecture ko sa inyo no nag-iba nag-iba yan bakit nung araw old muna tayo old rule nung araw ang mangyayari pag free trial di ba was scheduled free trial for example today ngayon hindi matutuloy yon paglalabas si judge ng order ano yon referring the matter to an arbitrator okay ah uh, to a mediator not arbitrator a mediator or to a court annex mediation. I refer yun, may order. So, walang pre-trial proper. Okay? Matapos doon, so, andun, mga 30 to 60 days. Babalik ang record pag unsuccessful. Ngayon, si judge, ano mangyayari doon? Ah, judicial dispute resolution. Because we have a judicial dispute resolution rule. Ano nangyayari doon? The judge, where it was original, to whom it was originally assigned, will conduct the judicial dispute resolution. So, ano mangyayari doon? Pag unsuccessful, he will have to inhibit himself. Unless both parties agree that it will continue with it. Tapos, doon lamang tutuloy ang pre-trial proper. So, madidelay yun, magrarapon-rapon, mag-assign. So, easily, mga one, two months na naman yun. Okay? Paliban lang pa pag may issue pa sa ibang pinagtatalunan. Kaya, kaya po ngayon, bumilis. Ito, maganda. And I would want to say that this is the brainchild of our present Chief Justice. Chief Justice Peralta. Naalala ko, ganyan siya. Ito, gusto, ito dapat. Kasi ganito na po sa criminal cases. Ano mangyayari? Ang nangyayari po, ang mauuna, ang mauuna na is pre-trial proper. So that issues are joined. Okay? Ang mauuna, pre-trial proper. After issues are joined, okay, anong masasabi? Tapos natapos na pre-trial, siya refer the parties to a court annex mediator. Doon lang po yun. And the period for the court annex mediator to, to try to help the party compromise will only be a period of 30 days without further extension. Siyempre, alam nyo may mga partners, hindi ho, medyo maganda ho usapan namin. Nakikita kami sa Starbucks. Eh. Ganun ho. Kaya lang, tandaan nyo, 30 days lang binibigay ng rules. So, tandaan po natin, no? pre-trial, after issues are joined, okay, natapos ang na-terminate ang pre-trial, doon ka palang magkakaroon ng court. Court annex mediation. Ganun po yun, ha? Doon lang po, ganun lang po magkakaroon na. Court and expedition. 30 days lamang without extension. Matapos po noon at nakita ng judge, ah, pwede, baka maseta ito kahit na naging failure yung ano, yung uh, court and expedition, mag-JDR. But the JDR will not be before the judge. It will be assigned according to Section 9 of Rule 18 to another judge who will conduct a judicial dispute resolution within a period of 15 days. If it becomes unsuccessful, babalik na ngayon sa judge na nag-conduct ng pre-trial proper. Alam na niyang issues na settled na nag-determine na lahat ng mga ebidensya, no, na marka na, tuloy na kami ng trial. That's the beauty. So that is how it is today. So take note of that Section 8 and that Section 9. That's the order na ngayon ng pre-trial and court annex mediation and JDR. Okay, now, let us now move on. Dito na tayo sa ano, ano? judgment after trial. This is very important. Ito po ito. The judge, di ba sa summary procedure lang po yun? Ang judge ay pwedeng mag ano? Summary procedure. Ang judge ay pwede pong mag, uh, mag-render na ng judgment. Pero po ha, hindi ito. Ibang summary procedure. Binibigyan ko lang ng konting pasakali. Bakit? Under the provision po, okay? under the provision of our present Rule 18, Section 10, the court could already render a judgment. Moto proprio. Okay, paano yan? 
the answer does not end the, the issue, an issue, or otherwise admits the material allegations of the complaint, or there is no genuine issue as to material facts, or there are what? No more facts controverted. Ano pwede? The judge can motu proprio include. So maglalabas ang judge ng pre-trial order, at sa pre-trial order na yun, sasabihin niya ano? Sa pre-trial order po na yun, ay sasabihin niya, Oh, oh magre-render na ako ng judgment judgment of the feeling that is the power given out to the judge okay that's the power so if the judge notices in the course of the pre-trial at pwede ko na it does not tender an issue miss the material allegations of the complaint it, okay or uh, there are no facts controverted pwede na ako mag judgment the judge can do that motu proprio to issue to include that in the pre-trial order that it is submitted for summary judgment and judgment of the feeling now, what is the period of the judge to render a judgment? Okay. From the termination of the pre-trial. Pag sinabi niya, oh, mag-render na ako ng judgment, sabi niya, shall be rendered within 90 calendar days from termination of the pre-trial. 90 days. Now, kindly take note. Baka sabihin ng iba, hindi, kaya questioning ko yan. Yung pre-trial order na yan, I will question. Hindi siya pwede mag-summary judgment, judgment on the pleadings. Kindly take note that there is a provision in Section 10 of Rule 18. Ano sabi niyo? No appeal or certiorari. You cannot question. Okay. No appeal or certiorari. Okay. Shall not be subject to the order to submit the case for judgment. Now, sabihin nyo, may mga practitioner, parang unfair naman o yan. Paano kung grave abuse of discretion? Ganito po yan. Siyempre, binibigyan ng presumption of regularity yung mga judges natin. Kabisado lang gibagawa na. At kitang-kita na yan. Besides, you still have a remedy. Eh. Your remedy is, you have to go to trial. Okay. Ang, ang remedy mo, pag dinismiss, o anuman judgment niya, pwede mo i-appeal later. Ang sinasabi hindi pwede appeal dito or ang certiorari is yung order na sa sinasabi niya, oh, is a summary judgment ko na yun. Ha? I would want to be very clear. Pero pag nag-render siya ng judgment, pwede ka may remedy ka, pwede ka nga mag-appeal. Eh. Okay? Ang hindi mo pwede i-appeal or certiorari is that order saying, oh, I will su- subject this to summary judgment or judgment. Of Next, malapit na po tayo, ha? last and then dun sa ano natin next topic deposition spending action and interrogatory to parties kindly take note of this this is rule 23-25 wala pong mabinago dito ang binago lang dito how to initiate so yung buong provision ng modes of discovery except for gender and calendar yung days dinagdagan ng calendar ito po ang major na nabago lang ano yun how to initiate under the old rule this is how to initiate it under 23 rule 23 and 25 after the court acquires jurisdiction but before answer, you file a motion. You seek leave of court. So you file a motion. After an answer, okay, you file a notice. Ganun po yan. And that is why ang abogado nun, oppose, yun nga, ay, oppose. Pero nga nagtanong sa akin sa isang MCM, Atty. Wala ang mahalaga yun. Contend sila, oppose, oppose. So it defeats what the position is. Now, under the new, I would say, under the new rule, you can now apply for the position pending action or interrogatories to parties upon ex parte motion. Okay? Upon ex parte motion. Now, let us now move on to the last slide. Ilipat yun na po sa last slide. Yan, no? ilan na lang yan. Tatlo na lang. Patapos na po tayo. I think just in time. Okay. Interrogatories. Ah, hindi. Tapos na pala ako dyan. Schedule of trial. Dito po matutuwa. Okay? Matutuwa dito ang mga practitioner na lagi na lang nagre-reklam po at lagi na lang napupulaan ang usgado. Oh, hindi, wala naman yan. Eh. Mabagal yan. Eh. Ganito yan. Eh. Lahat. Sa tagal ko na po nagpa-practice, lahat na po ng uh, hindi maganda na rin. Uh, and I've, I've been hearing complaints na parang unfair. Iba unfair. Bordering on ano, unfair. Kasi ibang practice nila, parang eh, yung pagsasalita nila eh, hindi maganda doon sa... And which is, this is where rights are determined. Dito. So, dito na po tayo. Schedule of trial. Papaano paano po ito? Ang ganda po nito, meron ng period ang plaintiff magpresenta ng ebidensya. Hindi po pwede forever. Cannot be perpetual. The defendant is given a period to present evidence. So just to give you a background, hindi na discuss po namin ito. Ang maganda rito na open na open ng ano, no, ang mga justices. Oo nga, matagal. Kasi nakita nila yung lead ng criminal procedure eh, na talagang may continuous trial. And then I also shared uh, that because sometime in 2018, I was invited to, uh, in Suffolk Law School as a visiting uh, scholar. I observed courts in Boston. Nakita ko po doon na kahit na, let's say, nag-pre-trial ngayon, kahit na matagal ang next hitting after three months, 
Pero once nagsimula ang trial, dinidiretso na yun, tapos na yun. Once the trial or the presentation of evidence commences, 9 to 2, 9 to 2, every day. Ganun po yun. So now, our courts, ano bang parameter? Plaintiff's presentation of evidence, 90 days or 3 months. Ayan. At kung magpapospon ka, babawasan yan. And that 90 days includes judicial dispute resolution. Nasabihin na, in 90 days na, kailan magsisimula? Within 30 days, from the termination of what? Pre-trial conference. So from the 30 days from termination of pre-trial conference, dapat nakapag-issue na si Judge ng pre-trial order. Katsunod na nun, trial. Plaintiff's presentation of evidence. With the period of 90 days only, pag nag-prespone, postpone ka niya, mababawasan niya. And the court will not give you additional days. And that includes judicial dispute resolution period. Okay. How about defendant? The same period. 90 days rin po. Okay, 90 days. Now, that is, what if there are counterclaims, third-party complaint? If there are third-party complaints, counterclaim, cross-claim, then of course, the other parties will be given a chance to present evidence. And that is also a period of 90 days. 90 days. Now, e, paano kung may rebattal? That is usually when the defendant, okay, presents what? A new matter. Like, for example, if his defense is payment, waiver, and the like, sabi ng plaintiff, I would want to rebut that. Rebuttal evidence, I need. And the court grants him 30 days for rebuttal and so rebuttal. Yun na yung total po nun. Okay? So, maganda. So, if you count it, parang 90 days, plaintiff, 90 days, defendant, di ba? Tapos, pag may ibang third-party complaint and cross-claim and the like, plus 90, o plus may rebuttal, so the entire proceeding, sabi ng court, under the rules, would be what? 300 days lamang. Okay? 300 days. Yun ang sabi. 300 days or 10 months. Now, that will be shorter. Iikli po yan pag walang ano. Pag walang mga third-party complaint, cross-claim. Anim na buwan. Hopefully. Six months or 180 calendar days. Now, the period for the court to render a judgment, and this is very good because it already is provided for in rules, it's a period of 90 days. It's a period of 90 days. Hindi ko katulad dati, ah, nahihiya kami. Parang tagal na. Kaya nakakatakot naman, nakakahiya naman magtanong, baka ma-offend si judge. And sometimes the clients will be asking, at ako may isang taon na, submitted na yan. Eh, anong gagawin? Eh, wala pa nga ako. Well, let's wait a little. O, oh, ba't di pa tayo mag-file a motion to resolve? Eh, nasa sa inyo. Then we have to explain the consequences of filing this. Because sometimes you don't want to uh, uh, offend uh, some judges, right? So, ganun na po. Period for judges to resolve, a period of 90 days. Without, with or without memorandum. Ganun po yan. Now, dito na po tayo sa o oral offer of exhibit. What about oral offer of exhibit? Ito po yun. Again, this is section 6 of Rule 30. Lahat po ng periods of trial nasa Rule 30 po yun. Section 6 of Rule 30, and what does it say? Before I proceed, kindly take note that this was likewise taken from the Judicial Affidavit Rule. Because under the Judicial Affidavit Rule, the offer of testimonial, uh, the offer of exhibit, okay, or formal offer of exhibit should be what? Ano po itong formal offer of exhibit? Should be made orally. At may experience po ako yan, ang mangyayari yan, sabihin niyo, tapos ka na sa testigo mo ngayon. Okay, oh, make your offer. I will say, exhibit A, I will state the purpose. Oh, sali, Tony, ba't di mo sinabi yung dokumento? Because the court, under the judicial affidavit rule, assumes that every one of us, the parties, tsaka court, alam natin kung ano po natin. So, A, exhibit A, what is the purpose? Exhibit B, the purpose. But some judges would allow it. State kung ano yung, ano na yun, yung uh, dokumento na yun. Exhibit C and so forth. And then the other party, are you done? Okay, object. Then the judge will have to resolve. That is now the offer of exhibit and shall be made orally according to this provision in accordance with Section 34 to 40 of Rule 132. Now, demur to evidence. Patapos na po tayo. Ito lang na dagdag. Pareho pa rin ba ang concept? The concept is still the same. Meaning, you only file the demur to evidence after the process, after the plaintiff has completed the presentation of evidence and on the ground of insufficiency of evidence. Yun. May nagbago? Wala. To epekto, pag girag, pareho pa rin. Okay? Ano yung ano? Ano yung dinagdag? Ito po. Pag nag-file ka ng demur to evidence, dininay ka, you cannot file what? You cannot file a certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, or even an appeal until after the termination of the case. Hintayin mo matapos ang kaso. Now, don't react. This is the same as in Rule 119, Section 23. This has always been the rule in criminal cases. 
Kasi otherwise, tatagal yan eh. Bakit? Hintayin mo pa yon. May ibang judges, hihintayin yan. Judicial courtesy until the, the defendant cannot present the evidence. Okay? So today, while you could still file a demerit evidence, if it's denied, okay, you can file certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, or even an appeal. So ano dapat mo gawin? Pre- proceed to present evidence. The next and finally, ayan, huli na po tayo. Actions on motion for judgment on the pleadings or summary judgment. Attorney, ano na bago rito? Well, yung uh, grounds, hindi naman na bago. Okay? Ito yung na bago. And this is where I also receive questions. Nakatanggap rin po ako ng katanungan dito. Ang tanong dito is sa ito. And I will quote it to be precise no? and accurate. Pareho yung provision ng judgment on the pleadings and summary judgment. Pag ako po yung biglang nawala, para kong humina yung aking ano, no? Humina yung aking signal. Ay, hindi pala yung signal. Yung nagsasabi na na low battery. Uh, babalik ko ako sakali ako mawala. I will read this portion. Ito ho kasi yung sinasabi nilang hindi lang masyado maindi na. And any action of the court on a motion for judgment on the pleadings shall not be subject of an appeal or petition for certiorari prohibition or mandamus. And that is the same. That is the same for both judgment on the pleadings and summary judgment. The question that I received was this. So, hindi pa paano yan? Pag nag-render na ng judgment, hindi ako pwede mag-appeal. Kasi nakalagay, any action of the court will not be subject of an appeal or certiorari prohibition or mandamus. But I see this more attuned with Rule 18. That any order of the court saying, kasi ho ngayon, ang judge, pwede na moto proprio. Mag-judgment on the pleading, summary judgment. Pwede ho moto proprio. Unlike before the old rule, only upon motion of the party. And there are so many jurisprudence that judges were sanctioned because without a motion, they rendered judgment on the pleading, summary judgment. But now they could do it moto proprio or upon motion by the other part because binigyan na po talaga ng hindi ng judge. Kung papag-aralan niya ng kaso, wala naman talaga huwag mapahabain. Huwag daw mag-trial. So ano yung tingin ko rito? Based on Rule 80, if the judge says, takes an action na, hindi, mag-judgment on the pleadings ako. Okay? Mag-judgment on the pleadings ako, summary judgment. That is not subject of an appeal, so should not prohibition naman daw. Okay? So I think we have covered substantially uh, or practically all that I have uh, prepared for you and I think that's around 95 to 97% of the profession pero siyempre sasabihin ko lalo sa mga studyante abay huwag kayong ano huwag kayong umasa lang sa lecture ko basahin nyo yung rules and then you could uh, connect it based on our discussion or baka you could find better insights especially for practitioners and for judges na maaring uh, who are here with us I know that they will look into the provisions of the rules now I think uh, I still have uh, a little time Para ko sumagot ng katanungan. Eh. Sasagutin ko po yung ibang katanungan. Okay. Uh, yan. Buti na lang eh ito. Sabi, sabi niya. Uh, bakit ba ito? Sabi niya. Basahin ko ha. Ah, muna. Ah, my signal is already fluctuating. Hang on. Sabi, bigyan niyo lang ako na noon. Isasaksak ko. 